Dina Pena has been teaching for 25 years and helping newcomers become part of the community. I've done these things to help the uh, limited English person here to guide them through and to teach them about this bigger culture. Tina is a national leader in training bilingual interpreters, meeting a growing need. She's helping Latinos assimilate and maintain their cultural roots. We Latinos are very resilient. We have moved here because we want a better life for ourselves and in turn for our families. We give back as gratitude of what we have received from this country. The joy of teaching mirrors the value of her community building work. To me, this is the biggest reward to see students. Aha, I understand. Backtracking, looking. Now he's gonna tuck it under and run. And look at Mike Marino. I always wanna join the Army. It was never the right time in life. I was chasing playing dreams and then coaching dreams. There was a lull there where I was like, eh, I gotta do it, it's now or never. So I enlisted. All those things you learn about teamwork and sacrifice and pushing your body to the limits, you don't think you can do it. It's the same thing in the military. So it was physically, all that stuff was really, it was easy. He's gonna go all the way for a touchdown. 80 yards on the run by Marino. Football definitely instilled that work ethic and that sacrifice that is needed to be successful in any endeavor. And you don't really appreciate it until you get out of athletics and you see the great lessons that you learn from playing, from playing sports. All my kids' friends love hanging out here. What's up, my peeps? Because hey. I'm the cool mom. Heather knows why this is the cool house. Yeah, your internet's blazing. We can all be on at the same time. <laughs> That's not why. <laughs> I know what teenagers like. Jamming out. I start riffing and they're like, I wanna be in that scene. For kids, dance is a language. And it's a language I just happen to speak. She thinks we dance a lot more than we do. Kids are feeling everything. You gotta get in that current, the teen current. Does Mr. Bauer still give a lot of homework? <laughs> Mr. Bauer retired. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Mrs. Curtis is nice, but the Wi-Fi is great. Oh, hey, sorry, you know you're filming. What? Twinsies. Stop copying me. <laughs> Get access to the fastest in-home Wi-Fi with Cox High-Speed Internet. Sports is not necessarily about, you know, just being good at something. It's what they, it can teach you. Being a part of a team is something that you can take with you for the rest of your life. I think that sports translate over to school, and to every other part of your life. Whatever you do, take it seriously. I feel like if you do that and you have that in your heart, you can do it. I learned a lot in school, you know, but there's things that sports teach you that school can't ever teach you. It taught me a lot, you know, it taught me teamwork and I was able to take everything I learned in high school onto my adult life. What high school sports did for me was show me that, you know, life is bigger than me. It's only a matter of time until your check engine light comes on, or worse yet, your car needs repair. That could mean a big surprise auto repair bill. That's why it's so important you call Car Shield today. I was elated that I had Car Shield. I was more than happy. There's no fun when you have a car and it's broken and you can't pay for it to get it fixed. So if your vehicle has 5,000 to 150,000 miles, just tell us the make and model of your car or truck and get an instant plan quote. In a matter of minutes, you can be covered. My experience with Car Shield is that they absolutely come through every time I need them. If my car breaks down, I can count on Car Shield to cover it for me. Car Shield definitely has my back. Now it's the time to make the smart choice and protect yourself from sky high auto repair bills. Call now for a free and instant protection plan quote. It's only a matter of time until repairs are needed. And once your car breaks down, it's too late. Call 1 800 437 9906. Get covered today.
Two minutes left to go in the game. We're get beat up, they're getting beat up. We're playing football, basically. We snap the ball, our quarterback rolls out. I'm coming from the tailback position. I leak out. He somehow finds me. I'm in the middle of the end zone, wide open. He throws it up there, put the pig in the mitts. I've been to weddings. I've had best men's at my weddings. It is a point of conversation. And the great thing about it is, because of Cox, I got the tape. Congratulations! Bob Eubanks, what are you guys doing here? Hi there, I'm Bob Eubanks on behalf of the Tax Defense Group, and Albert had a big problem with the Internal Revenue Service. Back in 2010, I had a bad separation from my business partner, and I basically left my business with a lot of debt in regards to sure. taxes. It was a trying time, and I just needed someone on my side. Where they weren't willing to understand from my voice, they were willing to understand from, from the tax defense group. Absolutely. Hey, if you owe the IRS more than $10,000 and you've got unfiled tax returns, then you better call my friends at the tax defense group. I mean, who knows? We might come to your house. That's right, Bob. Call the tax defense group to see if you qualify for tax relief. Call 800-218-8348. That's 800-218-8348. Welcome to Zachary High School, the home of the defending Class 5A champion Zachary Broncos. Tonight, they take on the defending champs in Division II, the University High Cubs, one of the best teams in the country. It's a battle of two of Louisiana's best here on the Yearview Louisiana Game of the Week. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Palermo along with Jason DeClaire. Glad you could spend your football weekend with us. We have a fantastic matchup here featuring two of the best teams in the South. It should go down to the wire. Yeah, you know, two different classifications, but I tell you what, playoff-like atmosphere, two of the best teams in the state, and I think if Zachary's going to have some success tonight, they've got to rush uh, John David McKernan. they got to make him uncomfortable, not allow him to get it to his big playmakers, and for Zachary, they need to get it to some of their playmakers themselves. Well, let's take a look at some of our key players for this game, brought to you by ITI Technical College. First of all, for you, high, the Texas A&M commitment, Christian Harris. Yeah, 6'3", 230 defensive back, go figure. Also plays wide receiver, tells you about his speed, He's going to also be doing kickoff returns, but his most important assignment tonight may be guarding the Zachary wide receiver Chandler Whitfield. Keelan Brown was last year's most outstanding player in the 5A title game. He usually plays big in big time games. Yeah, and maybe the state's top dual threat quarterback, but I think for Zachary, they're going to need to use his legs more this game. We know he has a cannon for the arm, but he's going to need to help their running game with his legs. Now on tonight's atmosphere of this one, we send it over to the third member of our broadcast crew, Smacker Miles. You guys mentioned how big of a matchup this is, and the atmosphere is definitely reflective of that. Coach Brewerton told me a couple weeks ago that they were going to have the Parish County Line Band here, and sure enough, they did, and lots of tailgating. Here's what he had to say about his team's excitement for tonight's game. I think we feel, uh, you know, they're excited. We feel privileged to play in a, a game like this. Um, we played in a lot of big games over the course of the last five years, and, and uh, very happy to have this one at home. Um, but, you know, our, our guys have played in some big-time games before, and this is another one, and, and uh, great challenge before us tonight. Thanks, Coach. A huge crowd is building here at the Bronco Corral. The Zachary Broncos and the U-High Cubs. Kickoff coming up. 
here on Game Time. Game Time High School football action on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, the holiday season, and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. For live streaming, behind-the-scenes coverage, and more, check out yourview.com. Drone Racing League pilot Wild Willie is testing his skills on the scariest course imaginable his mom's house. Fortunately, he's using panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox, because even a one second delay could mean trouble for everyone. Wall-to-wall -wall fast panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Wi-Fi at the speed of flight. Watch the newest movies the best way possible with Movies On Demand from Cox. Captain Lindo Carrison. Han Solo. If you come with us, you're in this life for good. Well, what do you know? When have I ever steered you wrong? <laughs> Solo, a Star Wars story, rated PG-13. The best way to watch movies is movies on demand from Cox. Just go to Channel One to order instantly. Back on game time, Jeff Palermo along with Jason DeQuere. Let's take a look at our keys to winning this contest. First of all, for the U-High Cubs. Yeah, they need to limit the big play. Zachary has some talented, skilled players, and they need to keep them in check. Contain Keelan in the pocket. Expect him to use his legs more this game. And then U-High wants to build a consistent run and tack with Michael Hollins. And for Zachary, they can't have any turnovers. You're playing an explosive team. You can't give them an extra possession. Limit the special team returns and watch Christian Harris back there. And and then they also want to keep Keelan clean, meaning you have a good pocket for him to make some throws. A moment ago, you saw U High head football coach Chad Mahaffey, the Class 3A Coach of the Year. Smacker Miles had a chance to talk to him a few minutes ago. U High has been a part of a lot of blowouts this year, but that's not what they're expecting tonight. Here's what Coach Mahaffey had to say about tonight's matchup. Well, you know, tonight is kind of our, our third uh, defending state champion in a row, and uh, Zachary's got a really great team, really great program. And, um, you know, they're going to test us on both sides of the ball. And uh, playing in their home stadium uh, with the atmosphere tonight will be a challenge, but our, our guys are looking forward to it. Thanks, Coach. That's good. Here, there you see the atmosphere, the crowd that has built here at the – Home field of the Zachary Broncos, the 5A champions in 2015 and in 2017. We're just moments away here from the opening coin toss. And um, not sure what exactly the delay is, but uh, here they come out. Now the officials are coming out. But I want you, uh, hopefully our, one of our camera, hopefully one of our cameras can get a, a view here of you high. Obviously today is just a sad and tragic day for the city of Baton Rouge, LSU, and the University High families as Wade Simmons, Wade Sims, the outstanding basketball player for the U High Cubs who led U High to three state championships, Gatorade National Player of the Year, was shot and killed early this morning near the Southern University campus and a Nice tribute to Wade Sims, who is on everyone's mind here shortly, right before they did the national anthem, a moment of silence for Wade as well and his family. Just uh, a heartbreaking story there to see a young man lose his life at the age of 20. Yeah, just tragic, tragic situation. And, you know, there's a lot of emotions running through the stadium, particularly on that U-High side. His dad was a player at, at, at LSU and obviously uh, uh, Wade was playing there so uh, something that this U High team will obviously be a little motivated for. We'll have more on Wade Sims as the broadcast goes on but this should be a fantastic matchup when you take a look at it. U High and Zachary. U High has come into this game with a perfect record of 4-0 and and is Smacker just mentioned, no one's really challenged them. We saw them a couple weeks ago against Southern Lab. We thought that was going to be a tight contest. It was over by halftime. The Cubs won that game easily over the Kittens, 42-14. to Well, Zachary has the type of program that can challenge this U High team and maybe the only team on U High's schedule this year that can give them such a challenge. Look, 
They've got skilled players. They've got strength. They can run the football. They can do all those things that could make you high uncomfortable, but they're going to have to go out and play the best game that they've played this season. This is the fourth straight game for you high against a team that won a state championship a year ago. They beat Southern Lab in week two, 42-14, then defeated Catholic High, the defending champs in Division I, 41-21. Last week, they beat a rebuilding West Feliciana team that won the 3A championship a year ago, 34 to nothing. And tonight, they take on the defending 5A champs, the Zachary Broncos. We are almost ready for football. Zachary comes in with a record of 3-1. and one. Their lone loss, a one-point loss to Catholic High of Baton Rouge. Played that game without... A couple of their top linebackers, Wes Brady and Maverick McClure, a two-point conversion at the end of the game, won it for the Bears. Last week, Zachary defeated Live Oak 24-10, but they didn't play a crisp game, probably looking ahead to this contest against the Yeah, and Coach Brewerton said he was upset by that. He thought his team was looking forward and really had to talk to them, but now, look, this game is here. You saw Chris Carey in the huddle a moment ago. He's coaching the special teams, and... Special teams, I think, are going to be a big part of this game. This is one of the keys right here is can you stop you have from getting great field position with their skill players on these kickoffs? Two great return men for the Cubs, Christian Harris and Dorian Harris. Not related. Christian Harris is the Texas A&M commitment, number two. And then Dorian Harris had a huge game when we saw them against Southern Lab. Out to kick the football for Zachary, Ethan, Patrick O'Brien. Week five of the high school football season set to begin. Zachary won the toss. They defer until the second half. So we will see the Cubs offense first. And we are underway from Zachary High School. Glad you could join us here on your view. And it will be Harris from inside his five. Nice job by the kickoff coverage team. Special teams played really well last week against Live Oak. And they start this football game strong. That's a huge opening victory for the special teams for Zachary, stopping Christian Harris, not allowing him to get his momentum going, and pinning you high down back deep in their territory. James Weatherspoon leading the charge for the Zachary Broncos. So here come the U-High Cubs, averaging 41 points a game. John Gordon McKernan, their senior quarterback, He's missed the last couple of weeks because of a high ankle sprain. You'll look at that left ankle there. It does have a brace on it, but he's ready to go here tonight. Play action fade, quick throw, and they get it out into the flat. Nowhere the rondo. Makaya Tong gets up to the 17-yard line, and that's about it. The Georgia commitment brought down. His 12th catch of the season has nearly 200 yards receiving already this year. U High quickly up to the line of scrimmage as they run some tempo. Bunch wide receivers on the near side. And now we have a whistle. And there needs to be a discussion here from the refs. There you saw the numbers from John Gordon McKernan. Got hurt in that game against Catholic, hurt his ankle. When we saw him against Southern Lab, he had a big night through for 224 yards and three touchdowns. Second year starter, second and six, back out to Christian Harris. And Harris, he's got room to run. Stiff an arm and a guy all the way down to the 37 yard line. Well, Drag we, down there, pick up of about 20. We talked about this guy in the opening. You can see him here, how big he is, his strength. About 6'3", 230, plays cornerback, wide receiver. And you saw the full package there, the stiff arm, the strength, breaking tackles and you know, some of the explosion and speed. He's a dangerous player. He is a big time player for the U High Cubs. That's his fifth catch of the season. Rated as the eighth best player in the state according to 24 7 Sports. McKernan will keep it. Throws and they get it to Christian Harris again. Harris up to the 44 yard line. Looked like Maverick McClure was there defensively for the Broncos. And there's a look at your starting lineups again. U High averaging 41 points a game. They like to run the ball, but they haven't done it yet here tonight. Micaiah Tung, Dorian Harris, Mark Coppola, good offensive lineman. Rashid, Rashad Green has really improved for him. And here's some pressure on McKernan, and he has to throw it away. Yeah, that's what you got. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, let's take a look at the, uh, continue to go over the U-High uh, starting lineup here. Dylan Rathke is the three-year starter, the leader of the offensive line, as he'll be facing third down and three. 
Christian Harris, Thomas Teeple, Mike Hollins has had a huge season this year. Last week he rushed for 211 yards and three touchdowns. First third down coming up. Third down and four, McKernan has a nice pocket to throw from, now has to run out of there and breaks a tackle and that's enough for a first down. Wes Brady who is playing with a broken thumb Playing basically with one hand, unable to wrap him up. Let's take a look at the Broncos starting lineup. Caleb Jackson is the guy to watch on that defensive line. The linebackers are impressive. Wes Brady, Maverick McCord, Taylor Milton, and Kenyon Martin is a good one too with 4.6 speed. Sean Burrell, he's a lot of fun to watch. Tyler Judson has 12 interceptions in his career. Howland's up the middle, there is a flag down. Hollins will outrun the, sack, the secondary for Zachary, but I think this is coming back. Well, you got a chance to see Mike Hollins' speed if you, if you had any idea. But there you go, Holden, this will come back and uh, hold all the excitement for just a second. Uh, this will be, be a flag and it'll be brought back. Fred Earhart is our referee. He'll give us the call. <laughs> Holding offense from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. Last year, U High beat Zachary 26 to seven. There was a big hole here. Granted, holding may have been a big part of it. But what U High likes to do is spread you out, sideline to sideline, and then bam, you know the quick hitters right up the middle and. You know, that's why you got to cover the entire field when you're playing against the Cubs. From the 38-yard line, McKernan feeling a little pressure, rolls out, now winds up going deep. Two wide receivers there. Jump ball, what a catch! Micaiah Tung! No, he dropped it. I thought he had it there for a second. Unable to make a grab, though, and he's angry with himself. That would have been a highlight type of catch. Wow. Well, well, watch here. Tyler Judson actually has great coverage. This ball hung up in the air on McKernan. Tongue was open initially, but as that ball, you can see it floating. Tyler Judson was there and just misjudged the football. And Tongue, with great con uh, concentration, almost came down with it. But for Tyler Judson, you got to make that play. You, you can't miss time that jump. You got to knock the ball down because these skilled players, these wide receivers from U High, they will go up and get it. Yeah, and an Ole Miss commitment going up against a Georgia commitment there, an SEC battle. Quick pass, and it is caught. This is Christian Harris. We highlighted him at the top of our broadcast. Good thing we did, Jason, because he's been involved in this game quite a bit, and you'll see him a lot on defense, and you'll see him in the special teams game as well. 14-yard pass play there. Well, and he's one of those players that may not come off the field tonight. He's involved in every aspect of the game. The difference here is let's see how that conditioning holds him up, particularly as much as they're using him already tonight. Another third down for you high. So far, they're one for one on this opening drive. Another throw to the near side, and there's Harris again. A little spin move, but he can't get away from the defender. Nice job, that's Sean Burrell, who was able to wrap him up and keep him from getting the first down, and decision time for Chad Mahaffey. Well, I'll tell you what, this is a long out route by McKernan, showing off his strength. This is one of the hardest throws in football. If you don't get it over there fast enough, the DB will certainly come and pick it up, but Sean Burrell definitely outsized, but that's what you need to do with Harris. Just hold him up until the rest of your team can get there or force him out of bounds. So fourth down and four, and they are going to go for it, or at least line up to go for it. Why not? Non-district game, two of the best. They give it to their best running back, Mike Collins, and he is covered up at the 48-yard line, and the Broncos defense comes up with the first stand of the ball game. There's Caleb Jackson, the senior, 27 tackles on the air, make it seven tackles for a loss. Well, big time play by Zachary, a momentum change of play. A little curious about this call, it's kind of a, it took a long time to develop. It allowed Zachary to, you know, to, to get some penetration there. As Mike Hollins, you can see, couldn't get going north and south. Good job by Zachary defense stringing that play out. A rather curious call there because Uhai opened it up throwing the football and then on fourth and four they decided to run it. Keelan Brown and the Broncos now out there. Keelan Brown wants to go for it all. He's got a man who's got a step on his defender and it's caught inside the 10-yard line. That 
is Chandler Whitfield, the Nickel State commitment, his 14th catch of the year, big time play for the Broncos, 42 yards. Well, this is the big U high, I mean, Zachary High receiver that I talked about in the game, Chandler Whitfield. I think he's the best of the receivers right now. He's the most polished, and you can see there, controlling his balance, watching his foot, making sure it doesn't go out of bounds, concentrating on the catch, and give Keelan Brown a lot of credit for a great throw to where only Whitfield could get it. Three returning starters at the wide receiver position, and now they hand the football off here to Kyle Landry. No running room whatsoever, though. William Gusman, one of the defenders there for the Cubs. And this will be the part of the offense for Zachary that I'll be interested to see how it develops. They've got two new running backs back there. You saw Landry on that one, but you see Keelan Brown here. I really think he's going to have to be involved in the run game some. He certainly has been in the past. He is averaging seven yards a carry this season, 265 yards rushing. That's how he did all of his damage last year in the 5A state championship game against Hanville. He ran the ball very effectively. Second and goal here now for the Broncos as Brown rolls out, throws, and it's behind his receiver, Chris Hilton, the sensational sophomore for the Broncos. That's a pass he's got to get better at, Jason. No, he's got to be more accurate. Coach Brewerton talked about it, and you could see him talking there to Hilton. I mean, Chris Brown, um, I'm sorry, that is Chris Hilton, and it looked like they weren't on the same page on that little comeback route, and so they've got to clean that up, but it was open for him, sort of the RPO run pass option there. Keelan Brown received All-State honors last season, MVP in last year's state championship game where he rushed for 189 yards and a touchdown on 15 carries. Very unique for a three-year starter on the 5A level, and you're only a junior. That means he started when he was a freshman. You don't see that too often on the 5A level, especially at a powerhouse school like the Zachary Broncos. He's a special, special kid. He's got third and goal here. He'll quickly get rid of it. Touchdown, Broncos! Chandler Whitfield, his fourth touchdown grab of the season, and Zachary strikes first. Well, if you want to know why Keelan Brown and Chandler Whitfield are special, just take a look at this, you know, and the timing, the timing of this route, and I'll tell you what, Keelan shows you his arm on this slant route. He zips that ball in, and Chandler Whitfield runs a great route, and really, that's almost indefensible, the way the timing and that route and that throw took place there. Good job there by Zachary's offense. Ethan Patrick O'Brien with the extra point try. And it's through the uprights. Zachary's offense looked good on this opening drive after the nice job by the defense to halt U High's initial drive around midfield. Let's take a look at it one more time. Yeah, I mean, that's just a laser. I mean, you know, it's not bad coverage. It's just better offense. And uh, that is just a laser right on the numbers there with Chandler Whitfield. So with 8.39 left to go in the first quarter, it is seven to nothing. Let's hear from one of our great sponsors on the game time, game of the week. ITI Technical College. Excited to have the president of ITI Technical College, Joe Martin, big sponsor out here on your view. Joe, how you doing? Very good to be here. Thanks for coming out here. Joe, you guys are not only Baton Rouge Business of the Year, but Forbes Magazine has named ITI Technical College top 30 business colleges in the country. That's yes, tremendous. That's correct. It's very awesome. Been getting a lot of uh, accolades lately. It's been uh, very awesome. After 43 years in business, I'm glad people are starting to notice us now. You've got people from all over coming. August was a big time for you. What, what are you teaching these kids? Tell us what's going on. Uh, we teach 10 programs, mostly industrial trades. That's what we're known for, process operations, instrumentation. Had more high school graduates entered this start in August than ever before. It was a, a, a big start for us this year. Next start, November 14th. And it's a big job market. I mean, you got uh, young people out there. They're not sure what they want to do. ITI Technical College, I mean, you can put them on the right track. Yeah, and that's what's so great in some of our trades. We actually have more jobs and we have graduates available for them to fill the jobs. What a wonderful position to have. Joe Martin, ITI Technical College. We can't do it without him. Appreciate you coming up here to, to this game. And how can folks get a hold of you? Uh, ITICollege.edu. Joe Martin, ITI Technical College, and we have got the Zachary Bronco cheerleaders. Girls! We love your view game time! Woo! 
want to thank the fine folks over at ITI Technical College as Zachary has punched you high in the mouth. We'll see how the Cubs respond on this return. And tripped up is the return man as he got across the 25 to the 28 on the return there for the U High Cubs. That was Dorian Harris. So a little bit better field position than last time, but still for U High starting at their own 28 yard line. Let's take a look at our scoring drive. Chandler Whitfield getting into the end zone for the fourth time this season. Four plays, 52 yards on the touchdown pass thrown by Keelan Brown. That is his eighth touchdown pass of the season. And it was all Keelan Brown and Chandler Whitfield on that drive because remember Chandler Whitfield had the big 45-yard pass completion and then finished it off with the 10-yard touchdown. Mike Collins gets the carry here, trying to bounce it outside, and there he goes. Mike Collins up across the 50, got a great block. Now the Broncos knock him out of bounds at the 17-yard line. What a great block downfield by Thomas Teepole, but there is another flag at the 48-yard line. Maybe that was too good of a block. Yeah, let's see, but I tell you what, I mean, Michael Hollins is showing you why he's such a special back, the vision, the power, and, you know, one of the more underrated players, believe it or not, on this UI team because he hasn't made his choice of where he's going to go to college. So, he, see, it is coming back, so he runs under the radar a little bit. Wipes out a 60-yard run there for Mike Hollins, the senior, who's rushed for 580 yards, averaging nine yards a carry. The offense, number 33. 10 yard play for the spotted foul, still results in a down. He was the most outstanding player in the Division II state championship game. Hollins has over 3,000 yards rushing in his career. Let's see if we can see the penalty. Was it number 76 there, Solomon Miles? There's the block. Oh, yeah, that yeah, was a is. bad ball. Yep. Yeah, I yep. thought it was a good block at first by Thomas Teeple, but it was a block in the back. So from the 42, still a first down. And that was Keelan Ross who gets up to the 46-yard line. A hard run there by Keelan Ross. He's a sophomore who has rushed for 129 yards on the season and a touchdown. But we saw you high coming out, throwing the football on the first drive. But what they really want to do is have a consistent attack on the ground. And that's a concern there for David Brewerton because he knows Mike Hollins, as he's seen it already a couple times here, he can, once he gets in the open field, he's hard to bring down. Well, and Zachary's been fortunate because there's been a couple flags. I mean, you has gotten the run game going. It's just that they've had penalties and infractions on those big run plays. Quick pass here to Dorian. Harris brought down immediately. Read very well by the Broncos. That's Taylor Milton. He got hurt early in the season, but still has 22 tackles on the year for the senior. And Dorian Harris was trying to turn up field, but looks like the turf monster may have got him. Yeah, but even if he had caught it, it looked like he was going to be covered there pretty good. Now, now obviously, he's shifty and could have made a man miss, but uh, that was a good job by Taylor Milton getting off his block and being ready in pursuit. Third down and eight now for the Cubs. They are one for two on third down conversions. McKernan throws, has a man open. This is Micaiah Tung in stride. Touchdown, Cubs. 56 yards, John Corden McKernan to Micaiah Tung, his third touchdown catch of the season. Well, unbelievable. I mean, you know, how quick this U-High team can strike. They've got weapons all over the field. You can see uh, Coach Brewerton on the sidelines just, just live it a third and long, and you give up a basically a 50-yard touchdown pass. But the thing about it is if you don't get any pressure on McKernan, then good luck because these receivers will get separation. Uh, they're great in open open space and they're gonna make big plays. So you, you gotta get to you gotta get to McKernan. You can't let him have a clean pocket. Caleb Knight and Loud tongue to get behind him. And the Georgia commit. It was all easy after the ball got in his hands and a great throw by John Gordon McKernan. And the extra point by Garrett Fleming is good. He's now 20 of 23 on extra point tries, and we're all tied up at seven. You high and Zachary, 6.53 left to go in the first quarter. We knew there would be some fireworks, and we've seen them already. This is a good one from Zachary High School. You're watching Game Time on your view. Game Time keys to the game are brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season, and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. 
in the blink of an eye. Cities fall, heroes rise. A heartbeat skips as a man slips gravity's grip, and heartbreak leaps from the brink in a blink. Just think of all the games, teams, hopes, and dreams that live and die because greatness lies in the blink of an eye. This is the sports app on Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. Game time on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Both teams have found the end zone early on in this one, in this highly anticipated matchup between U High and Zachary, two teams that won state champions last year in the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. U High defeated De La Salle 45 to 19. The Cubs are trying to become the first school, first team, first team in school history to win back-to-back -back state championships. They got 19 starters back from last season, and then for. The Zachary Broncos, they got a bunch of starters back as well. Eight on each side of the football after winning the state championship a season ago, beating Hanville. There's a look at the Pondas Barbecue scoring drive, finished off on the terrific throw by John Gordon McKernan to Micaiah Tung. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be an offensive explosion. It's kind of what we expected. That's what it's building up to be. Kickoff for Garrett Fleming, nearly gets out of bounds, trying to pin the returner along the sidelines, bringing it back the other way. It's the dangerous Chandler Whitfield. Whitfield gets all the way across the 30. That is not Whitfield. That was uh, Sean Burrell, excuse me, Sean Burrell, 17 compared to 19. But it's first down and 10 for the Broncos at the 35-yard line, a 29-yard return for the speedster Burrell. Yeah, and Zachary showing you, look, they've got speed and skill players all over the field as well. And you saw some of them in the opening. And you know, these teams just have the ability to score on each and every play. So first and 10 at the 35-yard line. The one thing I would say Zachary is lacking at this point is a really good running back. Maybe that will develop as the season goes along. They do have Chandler Whitfield, though. He's pretty darn good. Josh Slaughter there, able to shove him out of bounds. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for the Zachary Broncos. That offensive line, Caleb Johnson, Dylan Landry, Colby Matthews, Trey White, and Trey Leon Harris, averaging 263 pounds. Chris Simmons is a good one. ULM, Nichols, a couple of the schools looking at him. Chris Hilton will be special. Won the high jump in 5A last year as a freshman. And then R.J. Allen, the starting running back, Kyle Landry also gets some carries. And Keelan Brown will carry the ball from time to time. He got sandwiched there coming up. And a lot applying to hit was Jordan Clark. And slow to get up is Chris Simmons. Hopefully he's okay. He might have to limp off the field there. Let's take a look at the Cubs defense, allowing just 13 points a game. A lot of great talent here. Leland Jones, Donald Berniard. Jaquillan Roy just committed to LSU, 6'3", three, 315 pounds. Brighton Conston is the linebacker committed to Clemson. But Jacob Burke might be the best player on this U-High defense. Just a terrific football player who will end up playing baseball in college. Brown's got to get out of the pocket. Needs to get to the 45, and he does for the first down. Nice job there by the junior quarterback. Able to outrun Jordan Clark to the sticks. And the Broncos will convert there on third down. And if Zachary's going to have a chance to stay in this football game or win tonight, that's what Keelan Brown's going to have to do. You were just asking, Jeff, hey, who is the running back for this team? Well, I think it's going to be this guy right here, Keelan Brown. You know, you don't have as uh, explosive as running backs as Zachary has had in the past, and Keelan Brown is probably going to have to pick up that load. So first and 10 at the 46-yard line as Brown will survey the defense. And he'll keep it. And a hard hit right in the middle of the field. Gideon Cuellar, the six foot, 210 pound senior, and Brown, a quite a collision there. Also in on the stop was Brighton Constant. And there's the Clemson commitment. This dude's pretty good, six foot two, 220 pounds, over 100 tackles last year. And now we have our hydration timeout with 528 left to go in the first quarter. 
Well, we talked about it at the coin flip, but really a tragic, sad day in the city of Baton Rouge and for University High and for LSU and really anybody that loves athletics here in this part of the world, the tragic death of Wade Sims, who was killed in a overnight shooting near the Southern University campus, but this kid was a very special player, fun-loving kid, won three state championships for the U High Cubs, and of course his dad, Wayne Sims, played at LSU as well. Our own Smacker Miles attended school with Wade Sims, and Smacker, I know you can share some thoughts on uh, a tragic incident that has happened that's affecting a lot of people today. It is. It's a very tough day for U High families and a lot of close families in this school and everyone at U High knew Wade. He was a wonderful guy. He really did just light up any room he was in. Wade was always good for a smile when I was home from college and one day he said, how's Texas smack? And I said, Wade, like it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Swimming's good. And he just kind of looked at me innocently and said, like, how could you leave? And it just so says so much about his love for Louisiana and his love for the people that he was around day to day and I think that impact has shown a lot today a lot of people are very upset and thinking of him and remembering him in positive ways today well we're certainly thinking about him and the Sims family and everyone at U High that knew him so well and of course at LSU and hopefully justice will be served in that incident a 10 yard catch there from Keelan Brown to Jardarian Davis also known as Buddy Davis seven catches on the season but Keelan Brown has been sharp so far in this game. He's four for five for 65 yards, Jason. Yeah, but for that one miscue, and I mean, he has been on target. He's throwing it sharp and throwing it with authority. First and 10 at the 39. He's going deep once again, and just a little bit too far for his receiver, Chris Hilton. This kid might be the next superstar player that we'll be talking about in this area. He's only a sophomore, but he won the high jump in 5A as a freshman. He starts on the basketball team, and he's a 4.0 student. Yeah, and I mean, Coach Brewerton just raved about him on our call this week, and, you know, this is going to be the next great star here at, at, at Zachary. You can see his numbers here, but just his athletic ability, and he is already turning major colleges and, and their heads are looking at this kid right now. So. Yeah, LSU has already started showing some interest in him and he could be a track star, he could be a football star or who knows maybe he'll develop as a basketball player as well. Looks like we got another flag down here on the field on the on the near side. Well we got Brewerton out in the field you see him at the bottom of your screen he's screaming at somebody. Well Let's hear from Fred Earhart. Bill. Oh, picking up the flag. Well, I don't think that makes David Brewerton any, any less angry. <laughs> well, I, I don't think you're going to see him less angry tonight. You know, I mean, this is a big one for him. And look, it's, you know, it's, it's, they're not playing in the same classification, but these two schools are considered two of the best in the state. And you better believe, you know, they, they both want this one very bad. The stands are packed on the near side. They had Parrish County line jamming out in the parking lot before the game. A, a college football atmosphere here. Brown has got to take off with it again. A little high stepping into the sidelines, and he gets the first down. And Keelan Brown, he is playing very well in this football game. William Gusman chased him out of bounds. And what you high is going to have to do, if you watch the replay here, what Keelan Brown is looking at the linebackers, the linebackers have dropped off in space, and as soon as Keelan Brown notices that those linebackers are 10 and 12 yards deep, he realizes that's my zone to run the football. He's going to step up and make that decision very quickly and go get the first down. I honestly think that you high, if they're not, they're going to eventually have to put a spy on Keelan Brown. Keelan right now ranked as a three-star prospect, rated as the 25th best player in Louisiana for the class of 2020. Big shoes to fill when he took over as the starter. He didn't take over as the starter immediately his freshman season. I recall it was more midway through the season, but that, of course, was after the season where Lindsey Scott led Zachary to its first Class 5A state championship. And Lindsey Scott put up astronomical numbers on his way to winning the Farm Bureau Insurance Mr. Football Award. 
And now Lindsey Scott is at Missouri. Yeah, that's right. And, and look, the comparisons are already being made here in Zachary. Uh, Keelan Brown to Lindsey Scott. Lindsey Scott got to uh, start playing here at Zachary when he was a freshman. So is Keelan Brown. We kind of talked to Coach Brewerton about the two. I'll tell you, uh, Keelan is probably a little bit taller, not as thick, but he's got a rocket of an arm and may even be a little bit faster uh, than Lindsey Scott was. Well, this week on Yearview's High School Football Recruiting Podcast, over the middle, Jeremy Crabtree is joined by Garden City Community College coach Jeff Sims. College coaches know Sims is a national championship winning coach and is one of the first people to develop a player personnel department in college football. He also coached more than 40 NFL players, including Jason Pierre-Paul. But many will recognize Sims from his appearance on season three of Netflix Last Chance You. Also, Jeremy breaks down why recruiters have flocked to Tulsa's Booker T. Washington High School. That's more, that and more on this week's episode of Over the Middle Podcast. You can check it out at yearview.com. Nice run after the catch there by Chandler Whitfield. Well, Gideon Cuellar for U High has got to step up and make this tackle. Look, U High's got skill players. This time you just flare Whitfield out in the flat. Just get your playmaker the ball. But watch Cuellar right here. I'm sorry, that wasn't Cuellar. That was actually um, uh, Jordan Clark who, who who whiffed on the tackle right there. Was, and, uh, and Chandler Whitfield able to get some yardage. Looked like there was a block in the back when we watched that replay, and it is coming back. And... The man in black, David Brewerton, not liking that call. What a job Brewerton has done here. He has certainly established a football program and a great culture here. Did an outstanding job at Livonia. He led Livonia to the 2013 state championship game where they ended up losing to Union Parish. And then two years later, he won that state championship with Lindsey Scott. And then last year, he did it with Keelan Brown as his quarterback. First down and 15 from the 34-yard line. Brown setting up the screen, and I don't know how he got it to him, but he did. And that's Kyle Landry all the way up to the 20-yard line. I thought that was going to end up being incomplete, but it got into the hands of Kyle Landry, who quickly turned it upfield. Well, you see here, good job by Keelan Brown getting it out to Kyle Landry so that he could make the catch, but a great play call here. When you get pushed back and uh, first and long to go, and, you know, you pick up this many yards on, on first down, and now you've got yourself in really a great situation here where you could potentially take a shot here early on second down. Brighton Constantin had the tackle there. It'll be second down and one from the 20-yard line. And they'll give the football to Landry. Landry gets around the edge, puts his head down. He gets all the way up to the 13-yard line. Big hit at the end of that by Jordan Clark, the son of Ryan Clark. But it's first down for the Zachary Broncos. Of course, Ryan Clark had a long career in the NFL. Now does a lot of work on ESPN. And Jordan Clark is considering where his future may take him after growing up around the Pittsburgh Steelers when Ryan Clark won that Super Bowl ring a few years back. You see Landry getting his shot in the backfield. Not the big physical backs we're used to seeing here at Zachary, but, but effective thus far. And there is Jacob Burke, three-year starter on defense, very smart, he's gotten bigger, faster. Plans on playing baseball at Southeastern Louisiana and a big time leader on this U High Cubs defense. Yeah, you're right. And it's probably the, the real glue to this U High team, a motor that just doesn't stop. He's very difficult to block and he's a sure tackler. Tells you it must be one heck of a baseball player, you know, because obviously it looks like he could play football at the next level as well. Second down and 10. Kyle Landry to the left of Keelan Brown here. Three down lineman for the Cubs. Little touch pass to the corner of the end zone. A little bit too far, though, for Chris Hilton. And that's one of the things that Keelan Brown does have to work on is that touch pass. Way too much mustard on that one. Well, and also he should, probably should have identified that they had safety help over there. Chris Hilton was already over there. They put two over the top there that time and really probably not the place to try to force that football in. Third down and 10. It would be about a... 39, 
29-yard field goal from there, 30-yard 30, 30 field goal, something like that. And talking to Chris Carey, that's about, you know, O'Brien's range. They said they would let him go for about 30 yards, but that's it. Remember, placing the, uh, replacing the great Martel Fontenot that was here. Yeah. Pressure on Brown and his pass to the end zone. Did he get a foot down? No, he did not. Incomplete. Trying to hit it to Chandler Whitfield. That was a nice throw, though, by Brown. He got some air, put it at a good spot for Whitfield to get it, but just too far for him well, to grab it. Well, let's see if we can see this one all the way through. But again, just showing you his arm strength, throwing from that other hash and looked like great placement. Uh, could not, oh, and he dropped the football. That's what I was curious. But even if he had hung on to it, you can see where I think that first foot there may have touched the white chalk there and uh, wouldn't have counted anyway. So here we go. We're going to be testing the limits here of O'Brien's field goal range, according to Coach Chris Carrier, who uh, handles the special teams here. He did make a 29-yard field goal against Catholic High, and this one's from 30 yards out. And it's blocked. And now it's going to be a chance to return it for the U High Cubs. This is Leland Jones across the 30. Jones across the 50. Only one man can catch him, and he does, all the way to the 28-yard line. Wow. Wow, we're used to seeing big, big plays on offense by U High. But again, that third phase of the game will kick in, and that's Leland Jones there. It got the block. Right here, it looked like Tongue getting in there. No, that's the Josh Slaughter. Slaughter. Josh yeah, Slaughter. Slaughter getting in there and falling right into the hands of Jones. And watch the watch the convoy, almost set up like a kick return here. Just a convoy of blockers out front. And Jones almost able to take this the distance, but good hustle there. Good hustle there by number four, Jaden Williams, uh, to ensure that Leland Jones wasn't able to carry that into the end zone. But again, that's that third phase, and you know, not feeling as confident on their kicking game with uh, Martel Fontenot not here at Zachary, and you're trying to go up by three, and in turn, you, you get the field goal blocked, and now U High is knocking on the door again. Whistles here, maybe U High a little confusion. And the Cubs take time out. So they had Brighton Constant out on an offense. Well, another great sponsor on game time is Pondas Barbecue. Once again, a terrific pregame meal. Because of them, let's throw it to Jim Hogg and find out more about Pondas Barbecue. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say, when you think about football, heck, when you think about anything, you think about barbecue. And there's only one place in this region that puts out the best ribs, the best beans, the best briskets. And I'm talking about Pondas Barbecue, I got the man right here, Gerald Hopper, Partners Barbecue. Thanks for coming out, Gerald. You're welcome. I'm glad to be here, Jim. You're a big sponsor of these Yearview games, and we can't do it without you. But I got to tell you, the food that you prepare fresh every day is incredible. Your ribs, tell me about the ribs. Well, they're slow cooked, I can tell you that. Uh, we, uh, it's the way you cook ribs. So you cook them very slowly on a wood burning pit and smoke them real good and they come out real good. And that's what we've been doing for 35 years. 35 years, yeah. you're so consistent. Your baked beans, you've been, People Magazine, there was an article that said your baked beans were the best in the world, according to country music man, uh, Tim McGraw. That's true, he did, he picked us out. You know, you could just about have make a meal on your baked beans. You could, because they got meat in them, they got brisket in them. <laughs> you could, yeah. But uh, you know, uh, we have a saying, uh, Jim, that, uh, uh, and everybody likes to cook and barbecue at home, and that's great, that's fine, I do too, but uh, m most of the time, uh, you know, what our saying is, our saying is, don't pitch a pit. Don't pitch your pit out. Let yeah. us do the cooking. And that's what we do. And that's the way we've always approached it. We're still doing it. And like I've said before, we're still the one. Podner's Barbecue. How can people get a hold of Podner's Barbecue, Gerald? It's on uh, the web at uh, podnersbatonrouge.com. Podnersbatonrouge.com. Let them handle all your catering business. They can handle it for you. Thanks, Gerald Hopper, for being a big sponsor. And Podner's Barbecue for feeding the crew every week. You're welcome, Jim. <laughs>
Back to action here after the timeout by the U-High Cubs. Want to thank Ponda's Barbecue once again. Mike Collins to carry there. And no flags that time when yep. <laughs> Mike Collins actually carried the football. Uh, that'll, that'll put a smile on Coach <laughs> Mahaffey's face because they've had some big, big run plays negated already in the first quarter. And then you now you're getting a chance to see Michael Hollins carry it free of flags. Obviously, they want to get him going. I still believe, Jeff, with all the skilled players that U-High has, Mike Hollins is still the main workhorse and the main feature of this offense. Certainly is. He's had some huge numbers already this season. 211 yards rushing last week against West Feliciana. Quick pass too high there for Micaiah Tung and then he got undercut on the play by Caleb Knighton and I wonder if Micaiah Tung might say, hey, John, let's let's get it down a little bit here. I, he didn't have to. McKernan already looked at himself and said, my bad. Look, you, <laughs> you don't want to send your receivers up in the air like that. Only, only bad things can happen. And, you know, every now and then one will sail on him. But McKernan said, hey, look, he took responsibility for that. And, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to get you next time. U High's two for three on third downs. This will be third down and six. And they go to Hollins right up the middle. Hollins to the five, battling his way to the end zone. Nobody can stop him. Touchdown. Touchdown, Cubs. Can you say bull or big time Cub? Because that's what that is right there. I mean, that's just. That's big boy know, football. That is. I mean, and, and, you, and he has not committed yet, but you can see, look at his arms. I mean, this guy is going to be, could play in the SEC. I think he's an SEC style running back. And right here, you're going to see why. Runs between the tackles, has speed. But I tell you what, he blow through that first piece of contact like it was nothing. And then it was just mono. Well, actually, it was two defenders first one at the goal line. And he was able to power through them both and get into the end zone. Powerful run there by Hollins. Yeah, I don't think he gets as much attention as he should, and I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe playing on the 3A level. Maybe because there are so many other great skill position players on this team. I, I just think, Jeff, the, the way football is now, it's quarterback, wide receiver. Those are the ones that, you know, it's a pass-happy game now, and those are the ones getting all the, all the big-time glory. But your, your big workhorse is like this. You know, and, and your guys in the trenches, your offensive linemen, your defensive linemen, these are the guys that are really, really valuable. And I tell you what, right here, that's just a load. And he's going to be a he's going to be a tremendous player on the next level. Let's take a look at our scoring drive. Brought to you once again by Pandas. Three plays, 28 yards after the block field goal. And the uh, very nice return by Leland Jones to get the ball to the 28 yard line and Mike Collins does the rest. Well, the way I look at this is really both clubs have uh, exchanged turnovers. Uh, you high went for it on fourth down and you know, wasn't able to uh, wasn't able to convert and it allowed Zachary to get on the scoreboard and then Zachary trying to kick an extra point and what I mean, not an extra point, but a field goal and gets blocked and it set you high up for a touchdown. So now we're kind of kind of even on the turnovers. It's Zachary's turn to take their offense and try to march it down the field. Fleming has it teed up for the U-High Cubs. Coverage has been a little inconsistent this season, according to Chad Mahaffey for U-High, so let's see how they handle it here with some really good return men. Well, they're just trying to kick away now. On one half, the return man. That is Whitfield, and he's brought down immediately at the 27-yard line. Nice job that time. As he was brought down by Jarden Gilbert. And yes. it's now first and ten for the Broncos. Yeah, just changed the type of kickoff, did more of a sky kick, and as soon as it hits the ground, it really, you know, breaks the, the momentum of the return game, and so good job there by changing it up a little bit on, with you high on, on kickoff coverage. R.J. Allen now in the backfield with Keelan Brown as you look at Brown's numbers. Very good so far tonight. And he'll keep it. And he's got some room to run. Running hard, and he gets shoved out of bounds. Gets about eight yards. Well, Christian was, Harris with a push out of bounds. That was a hard, ugly fall by Keelan Brown over there on the sideline. He went tripping over the over the first down stick. But watch this. I'm, I'm glad he's able to get up. But this, this is an ugly, ugly fall here right there. And uh, couldn't, couldn't see the end of it. Maybe here. And 
looked like, at first it looked like his cleat got kind of slipped on the first down marker, but it was on the side of it. So fortunately for him, he's able to get back and return to the huddle. Those chains have taken a beating on the far sidelines. Yeah. The second time a player has come crashing into him. There's that slant play again, Good and bye. that's Chandler Whitfield. Turn on the Jets and forget about it. Chandler Whitfield makes this a one-point game. Unbelievable. Let the fireworks begin, and look, that's that slant route, and if you're gonna, if you're gonna give Chandler Whitfield space and you're gonna give Keelan Brown time to convert on this slant, they're gonna burn you. I mean, you're gonna have to get up in coverage and take this away because look, you see right there, that's just too fast and too quick. And he outruns the entire secondary. That's big time speed. We talked about Whitfield. I think he's the best playmaker outside of Keelan Brown that Zachary has on, on offense, the most polished playmaker. And you've seen him have a big game down in the first possession and here taking another one and housing it. Drew Nettles with some words of encouragement there for Chandler Whitfield. And the extra point try is good somehow. Somehow got through those crooked uprights. I think it's leaning just enough for him yeah. to get in there. Yeah, well, he's a, this guy was talking to Kerry. He's a soccer player, and that time it was more like a shot on goal than a goal kick, you know. Uh, but he's got to get that football up. I think that was the, the issue with the uh, – with the field goal, but here you go, Chandler Whitfield just turning on the afterburners. And let me tell you, Jeff, that's not slow guys in you you high's defensive yeah. backfield that he's out running. Those are some those are some lightning fast guys. When you're talking about Jordan Clark and Christian Harris, I mean he's pulling away from some some fast people there. Game time on your your view, Louisiana. Thanks, Louisiana Lift, for their support of this telecast, specializing in customer service on equipment, rental, parts, and training. Louisiana Lift has been serving its customers since 1980. You can check them out online at LALift.com or call their Baton Rouge office at area code 225-753-5700 or contact the New Orleans area office, area code 504-463-3400. Louisiana Lift, they're always on call. 14-14 is the score. O'Brien's kick to the nine yard line. And here comes Dorian Harris. Harris across the 35 and then it is spun out of bounds by Sean Burrell, but good field position here for the Cubs. Each team has scored twice and we have still have 21 seconds left to go in this first quarter. Yeah, I mean, wow, look how much has happened in this first quarter. And you talk about a heavyweight matchup, just, just taking turns, just launching blows at each other. And now in you has the ball, you see Coach Mahaffey over there with his team kind of, you know, getting them ready to take the take the field again. And of course, Coach Mahaffey calls all the offensive plays. So you see him in the center of the huddle there and it's gonna be, you know, their turn to line up here. You want to talk about somebody that loves football and studying football? That's Chad Mahaffey. Watches a lot of college teams practice in the spring or maybe in the summer. He'll go to clinics, reads a lot of books on play calling. And he is a football junkie. Hollins, does he got any running room there? Not so much. Wes Brady and Hunter Bell combine on the tackle. A pickup of three. That's a minor victory for this Broncos defense, which allowed just or which has allowed just 12 points a game this season, and U High has already surpassed that as our final seconds of the first quarter finally tick off the clock. It's been an exciting one from Zachary High School, just like we build it. 14-14, U High and the Zachary Broncos. More coming up. This is game time on your view. Jeanette, you know how during our date, we couldn't remember the name of that show we both liked. We're Cox customers. We can find it on Contour. Last nine viewed. My grandkids are here. <laughs> Home improvement shows. More like this. We liked House Hunters. That's the name of it. Grandpa, you have a girlfriend? We're not using labels. That's a yes. Watch more, search <laughs> less, because you're a Cox customer. Cox.com slash learn. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. Owen! Back for more, huh? Run! I have to see this. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote.
Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. Hey, Mr. Thompson, you know how you were so mad about going over on your mobile data plan? Well, we're Cox customers, and this is one of over 500,000 Cox hotspots, totally included in most Cox internet packages. Look, go to your mobile settings, click on Cox Wi-Fi, then plug in your Cox username and password, and then you're on Wi-Fi. And you can like, stream that video of my band, literally no problem. Find free hotspots, because you're a Cox High Speed Internet customer. Cox.com slash learn. Wow, just a tremendous atmosphere here at Zachary High School. Jeff Palermo, Jason DeQuere, Smacker Miles down on the sidelines enjoying this one. All tied up at 14 apiece on a perfect night for football on the last Friday in September. It is. No rain. Weather cooling just a tad. Starting to feel like real football weather. First and second and seven for you high at the 43. McKernan's got to get out of there. Nearly got sacked. Throwing on the run and it's caught. Makaya Tung, how do you stop this guy? He picks up the first down as he got open. Good coverage there. Taylor Milton was right there, but Makaya Tung makes the grab. Well, this is a really good job by McKernan here. And, you know, Zachary's going to have to bring pressure, make him feel a little uncomfortable. But McKernan's showing you that if you force me out, flush me out, I got to roll out, I can still take my time and hit my players on the rollout. That time he picks up Tung. Personal foul. First down. Well, that's not the type of penalty the Broncos need, trying to slow down this offensive attack by the UI Cubs. Last year, Makaya Tung had 32 catches. He's got four or five catches here tonight. At the 34-yard line, McKernan barking out the signals, gets it to Hollins. Hollins got hit at the line of scrimmage and falls forward. Great job defensively there by Charles Selders. Came into the contest, 23 tackles. Yes, yeah, Selders, a good look at him there, really shedding his, his blocker and getting in that backfield and, and, and getting to number seven, Hollins, uh, before he can really get his momentum going. Zachary Broncos defensively last year. They had four shutouts during a 10 game winning streak. And here's Hollins again. Hollins waits his time and then a bunch of Broncos corral around him and bring him down at the 30 yard line. I'll tell you what, that pile still continues to move forward. And those are those big tough yards. I call them SEC yards that uh, Hollins can pick up. And, I'll tell you, on this series, if you're watching UHI's offense, the one thing that you're going to notice is number two, Christian Harris, is not out there in the receiving core. Uh, he's not, he has not been in this rotation, this drive. Now, again, he's got to play both ways tonight, and you can see Zachary has some explosive receivers, but it's it's not accustomed. He has not accustomed to having him out of the receiving core. Jordan Clark is the wide receiver to the top of your screen. Four down lineman for the Broncos on third down at about five. Here comes the pressure. McKernan steps up and throws to Clark. And there was a lot of hand fighting there, but no flag thrown. And it brings up fourth down. And I would imagine the Cubs go for it. Good coverage, Sean Burrell against Jordan Clark. Let me look at this. This time I thought maybe Clark was the one who pushed off there, kind of shoved Burrell down at the bottom. But let's see if we can, well, he couldn't really see it there. But if anything, I thought it might have gone against Clark if a flag was flag was thrown, but no flag. And fourth down, this is a big down here for the Zachary defense. You high 0 for 1 on fourth down so far tonight. They need to get to the 24-yard line. Here comes some pressure. They pick it up, though. Now McKernan's got to get out of there. There's a flag fly. McKernan is still on his feet and then is brought down at the 12, but a flag has been thrown, and we'll see what happens here. Zachary is pretty confident that this one will be called against Uhai, and it is. Well, Zachary tried to bring some pressure. Uhai looked like initially they had picked it up, but obviously they had to get a hold in there in order to do it, and this is going to be an interesting decision here for, for Mahat. Turn to play, holding on the offense, number seven, 10 yard penalty from the spotted foul, replay four. Yeah. And of course, in high school football, it's a spot of the foul penalty, so that hurts you a lot more than, say, in college 
or in the NFL where it's just a 10 yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Yeah. But yeah, oh, that's a that's a takedown there by Mike Collins. <laughs> yeah. Not going to get away with that one. <laughs> uh, but uh, obviously you had, let's see if you can see it there. Yeah, Bring it a, down to West uh, Brady. Yeah. <laughs> and you high will punt the football here as the ball was pushed back to the 45. So they were looking at fourth down and 21. Zachary looks like they may come after this one. We'll see. Well, there should be another holding on Hollins, but there isn't. And the punt goes out of bounds. Looks like he was able to pin it. Garrett Fleming did. 33-yard punting average on the season. Well, he thought he got it inside the 20, but that's not what happened. It's at the 23. Well, we Let's have. take a look at the Class 5A power rankings. These are the power rankings. West Monroe right now, the highest power-rated team. Rebels got a big game tonight against Neville, and he got Terrebonne. Terrebonne's got a game tonight against Hanville that will be played in Thibodeau. Alexandria, number three. There's the Zachary Broncos. How about the season the Walker Wildcats are having? Of course, uh, their head coach ended up uh, having to resign a couple weeks into the season. Lester Ricard, East Ascension is always good lately. And here on the ground is Keelan Brown running the football to the 26-yard line. Well, and I figured Zachary may do this tonight, and you can see now Keelan Brown is beginning to, to rack up the carry. Some are designed uh, carries, quarterback keeps, and the others are really, you know, when he scrambles and the pocket breaks down. But he's, he's doing it both tonight. He's, he's rushing the ball well as well as getting it out of his hands and, and getting some good throws in there. He's a co-captain on this team, the only junior that is a co-captain. A lot of times... Um, in his freshman and sophomore season, really they put a lot of pressure on himself, just feel a little more comfortable, more mature. When you win a 5A state championship, makes things a little bit easier the next year. Running game not really going anywhere there with Kyle Landry, who is a hard runner, but he has brought down Jaquillin Roy, the LSU commitment, number 78, able to wrap him up. And what I'm sensing right now from Zachary's offense, now that it's 14-14, you're seeing they're slowing it down a little bit. They're slowing the tempo down. They realize, hey, it's 14-14, nine minutes to go in this half. Let's not let this half get away from us. And you can see how much slower they are operating right now. There's two straight runs, one by Keelan Brown, one by Landry there. And now just, you know, trying to grind this clock out a little bit and not turn that ball back over the U-high offense. Third down and about four. Brown gets rid of it. Lofts one deep, and that is too far for his receiver. Great coverage on the far sidelines, as that was Josh Slaughter, the junior, as they were trying to get the football to Chris Simmons. Haven't seen much of Simmons here tonight. It's been more Chandler Whitfield. Well, we saw him go down earlier, and you see him limping here still, and maybe not at full speed why he couldn't get all the separation. But if you see at the, well, you're not going to, but you can see right here, he's coming off, and, you know, he's limping a bit. And if you look, if you're not a, you're not a hundred percent out there, these, these DBs for you high, they've got speed. They'll challenge you. First time the punt team is out there, Sean Burrell. First year punter for the Zachary Broncos and doing a good job for David Brewerton's team, averaging 39 yards a punt and a very high punt, fair catch, and that's the best way to make sure Christian Harris doesn't beat you in special teams. Kick it way up in the air and where he has to call a fair catch, and that's what happened. Yeah, very effective. Maybe not as far as he wanted, but he didn't outkick his coverage. And uh, obviously, uh, Christian Harris had to choose to fair catch. It doesn't allow him to get a big return going. 31-yard punt. You high Cubs ranked number one in 3A. Where are they ranked when it comes to the Division II power ratings? And there you see University High. We'll see St. Thomas More in a couple weeks taking on Turlings Catholic. And then we'll see... Or there you see as far as uh, who's left after that, St. Charles. You know St. Charles will be there at the end. Turlings all the way down to 10, but Turlings has played a tough schedule. A couple losses in there, lost to Notre Dame. McKernan over the middle. There's Dorian Harris. Harris all the way inside the 20-yard line. Another big play for the Cubs. As Dorian Harris had the huge game when we saw them against Southern Lab. And finally, he makes a big impact in this contest against the Broncos. Well, this time it's McKernan's turn to thread the needle right there. And just a, a bullet pass there by McKernan. 
getting it right past the uh, outstretched hands of McClure. Again, not bad coverage, but just a just a better throw in there to Dorian Harris. And they're inside the ITI Technical College red zone after the 44-yard pass play. More of Dorian Harris. And Harris gets inside the 10-yard line as he was brought down by Caleb Knighton and a bunch of Broncos. And now Dorian Harris will limp off to the sidelines. Not a good sign if you're a UHI fan. Well, and, I'm, and, and that could be a big blow because, look, Christian Harris is staying on the sideline on offense. I'm not sure if something's going on with him, but Dorian Harris, you mentioned it, Jeff, and that Southern Lab game, he, he just exploded for a couple of touchdowns. So, you know, that's a big hit to this receiving crew for U High. Yeah, he'll run some jet sweeps. He'll do a lot of different things for this U High offense. Just outside the 10-yard line, they pitch it to Hollins. Hollins, uh, nice try by Maverick McClure to bring him down, slowed him down just enough, and Wes Brady finishes him off. Well, McClure shows you what he's all about on this play, and I'll tell you what, initially it looks like U High has caught him. Good blocking, but McClure just basically runs through his blocker there, gets by Popoff, and, you know, uh, pursues Hollins and slows him up such that his other teammates can get there and, and make the tackle. It's a big stop there for Zachary. And Mike Hollins is not on the field for this third down play. So Keelan Ross is your running back for the Cubs. Play action fake. McKernan throws and Micaiah Tung spins away from a defender. And I think he is strong enough and has enough for the first down as he got to the six yard line. What a physical Run after and the I, catch here by Micaiah And Tom. I didn't think, watch right here, there was a collision with his own player, just not good separation there, not getting the block. And I honestly thought that, you know, uh, uh, Gusman there was going to get in his way and, and, and not allow Tung to, to, to get the first down. But good job by Tung keeping his balance, concentration, and, and picking up the first down. Micaiah Tung having a huge game tonight for the Cubs. First and goal at the five. Let's see if McKernan targets him. Instead, they'll go to Hollins. Hollins running hard, and Hollins will be stood up at about the two-yard line, second and goal. I would imagine, though, if you're the Broncos defense, you're thinking, how do we stop them here on second and goal at the two? Not an easy thing for defensive coordinator Steve Thomas. No, it's not. But look, you know, as long as you don't let you high score quickly, they're making them work here. You know, it has not been easy since they've been in the red zone. The clock is ticking. And even if they do score here, Zachary gets the ball back with another chance before the half. Kenyon Martin was in on that tackle for the Broncos, second and goal. And here's Hollins again. And Hollins behind one of his blockers. I think forward progress has got him in there. Uh, Apparently not. A, no. I don't see a signal. It was going to be close. Looked like they hit him about three yards short of the goal line, and then the pursuit came, and so then you have the big scrum, and really you got to be down there on the field, one of the officials, to see whether or not he gets in. But Roch right here, right about the three-yard line, you see the initial contact, boom, right there. And uh, It's just well, hard to imagine good. he didn't get in the end zone. Oh, oh they fumble. mishandled the snap. So who's got the football now? I think McCartan, McKernan was able to get on it, in fact, where he recovered the football, I almost thought that he recovered it as a touchdown. It'll be fourth and goal for the Cubs. But this is, again, Jeff, I'm telling you, they have not made it easy for you high here, and the clock keeps ticking, and now, you know, this U High crowd and this fan base is going to get up. You can see, you can see the defensive players trying to get this this whole town into this play, and this would be a huge fourth down stop. They are right next to the student section too. Look like they are dressed up for a day at the beach, but this has not been an easy drive. Yeah, they lost about a yard here after that missed fumble. They got the jumbo package out there now. Christian. I think number seven will get the football. No, they give it to the big offensive lineman. That's Jacqueline Roy. And did he get into the end zone? Oh, wow. I know they are looking at it. Touchdown, okay. Cubs. Jacqueline Roy gets into the end zone <laughs> and have a little fun. Can you say refridge? The Perry. <laughs> huh? Jeff, that's your way, Chicago style, huh? Is that how you used to do it? Was that the same number he had? No, too, you know? 72. 72, okay. Yeah. He, and, and he's probably and Roy probably has all his teeth still too. You know, he doesn't have he doesn't have the Perry grill. But uh, good job there by Roy. And you know, when you got players as athletic as Roy and can move, and we talked about uh, with Coach Mahaffey how talented he was, you can then take him and put him on offense and do things like that with him. 
So they finally convert on fourth down. They're now one for two, one for two. They had a penalty two that halted an opportunity on fourth down. And the extra point is good by Garrett Fleming. 419 left to go before halftime. The Broncos will get the ball when we come back. But Jacqueline Roy, Jaquil and Roy getting into the end zone. And the Cubs lead it by a touchdown. This is game time on your view. Game Time on Your View is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Gather your friends and family to catch up on all the fall fun with Cox On Demand. Miguel? I'm going to be a musician. Help me follow my dream. I can help you. Come on. Who's ready to fly? Did you unlock a book? Oh, no. Reach deep down and let the scary out. Oh, scary. Up top. The Fall Fun Collection, now on demand. Game time keys to the game are brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Jaquil and Roy getting into the end zone. I can be <laughs> confident to say that's his first touchdown. And look, he's watching himself <laughs> on TV, you know. He said, I want to see myself score my, my first touchdown. And, you know, I'm sure he's going to describe it much differently uh, <laughs> at, at next week at school. But uh, he's got to enjoy those, although he's going to LSU. And if you remember, Marcus Spears used to play uh, yeah. some, some, some offense. He was a defensive lineman, but, but played some offense at LSU. So you never know. He could be a, a jumbo package guy at LSU. So the Cubs have the lead. Both teams have had the lead in this contest. But Uhi has had the lead for much of it, and we've had some ties in this game as well. Well, let's see if they try to squib it again. Uh, Zachary's done good with their kickoff return. Let's see if he's going to try to keep it away from, from, from Whitfield or Burrell. Two really dangerous return men. Oh, they're going to give Burrell an opportunity here from the 17. And there he goes. Almost found a seam there. Popped out there as he gets it all the way up to about the 37-yard line as he was tackled by Will Safford. That's yeah, not good either. Down. Yeah, I got Burrell now hobbling off on the sideline. And again, yeah, that's some of your some of your elite speed there. So you got to make sure that he's all right. Be interested to see how how God you see him still there over in pain. That that does not look good on the sideline there. And don't know if it's a cramp or, or whatnot. Typically that's that's what that is. Yeah, they're stretching him out. Timeout on the field here. I don't know if this is a hydration timeout or not. I did not see either team call the timeout. But what I was going to say, Jeff, it'll be interesting to see. You see Coach Bird in there. What style of offense he comes out with with four minutes left? Is it one that's a little bit more conservative, like we saw the last series, where two runs and then a big shot down the field? Or is he going to keep it wide open here? Obviously, he's thinking, let me – Worst case scenario, not put the ball back into Uhi's hands before the end of this half such that they could get more points. But, you know, I know he's thinking he wants some points himself before he goes in. Great run through the 5A playoffs last year. Shut out their first two opponents, Mandeville and John Errett. Then they had to go up to North Louisiana twice. They beat Airline in the quarterfinals, 34-24, and then a thrilling victory over the West Monroe Rebels in the semifinals, beating them by two. And they went back to the Dome and won the state championship, beating Hanville 34-14. There's the numbers for Keelan Brown throwing the football, and he's had a nice night rushing the football as well. First and 10 at the 37-yard line, and he'll pitch it out here. And this is Chandler Whitfield. Whitfield, he goes down the sidelines, and then he is angled out of bounds by Will Safford into U high territory as they figure out a different way to get the football to the Nickel State commitment. Well, and again, you, you, I, I've been really impressed. I've been impressed with Whitfield for a number of years, but here he shows you his burst. You know, he's one of those players that just has that burst, and he turns it on right there and gets through the hole, and, you know, that's special. That's what coaches look for at the next level is can they turn the Jets on after they've kind of, you know, running down the line of scrimmage and boom, has that big burst, and Whitfield's one of those players that, that, that has it. Jacob Burke thought he had the angle on him, and that was not the case. 
And look at this. This is Chandler Whitfield once again. Chandler Whitfield inside the 20. Finally dragged down at the 16-yard line. William Gusman. Well, if you want to get the running game going, get your best wide receiver in the backfield and give him the football. Well, that's what they're going to have to do. Look, again, you know, I'm not taking any way, anything away from Landry and Allen, but, you know, they're going to have to use other players to get the running game going. And now they're stretching the field on you high laterally with Whitfield speed. And, uh, you know, then you'll probably come back and watch out for Keelan Brown because then, and then he'll test you off tackles and, and on some of that, uh, uh, you know, quarterback read stuff. So, you know, just supplementing the run game. But really, this is a good series that you guys put together. And with 3.38 on the clock, what they're doing now is just slowing it down a little bit. And again, they want to chew this clock up to where if they score, fine. But if not, no time left for you high. Inside the ITI Technical College, this is red zone. This is R.J. Allen takes a big hit at the 10-yard line, but a very good run on first down, getting the football all the way to the 10-yard line. Well, Allen's sticking his nose in there. He's probably up here saying, hey, look, you know, you're saying we don't have a bruiser back here, but let me show you what I've got. And boom, he comes and lays the Christian Harris. Harris and just hits him in that 6-3 frame and just kind of hits him in his jaw and lets you know I'm back here. Second and two at the 10. Well, if Christian Harris becomes a big superstar in the NFL, R.J. Allen will have something to tell his kids. <laughs> yeah. I went mano to mano with Christian yeah. Harris and... He'll say he won the battle. Of course, of course. <laughs> it's like the fish story. It gets bigger and bigger. Second out and two. Whitfield's in the backfield oh, again. Instead, wow. they fake the pitch to him, and that's Keelan Brown galloping into the end zone. Touchdown, Broncos. Well, I mentioned this earlier, and so what happened is Chandler Whitfield was stretching you high laterally, sideline to sideline, and then what they did was they faked the pitch as if it was going to be a big sweep out there with the running back, and initially the U-high linebackers commit outside and then just creates a great hole there for Keelan Brown, and no, it goes in there untouched, shows you how he can explode the hole as well, but really that was set up from some of those previous plays by Chandler Whitfield. Extra point try, and these are a little tricky for Zachary this season. I think there was some movement on the line of scrimmage, so we'll have to see what happens here. I'd decline it. I'd decline it and take my... I just decline it and take my extra point. He did make it, right, Jeff? He did make it. Yeah. I mean, what? What are you? Oh, okay. May have uh, blown the whistle prior, before the prior kick. Too, so you have to ha have to kick it again. Well, that's almost worked in you guys' advantage, <laughs> to be honest with you. O'Brien is 18 of 20 on extra point tries this season. And he squeaks that one through again. Well, they, haven't, they haven't been pretty. You has been coming off those edges pretty, pretty abruptly there. And you see there uh, O'Brien there able to uh, get the extra point through. Let's see if we can. Oh, this is a this is the run by Keelan Brown. And again, you give him a crease, and this guy can explode. I mean, he's he's got uh, some 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 big time speed. Buddy Davis, a nice block there. Is David Brewerton's team is battling with the U High Cubs. You know, Jeff, he's thinking that was a great drive, guys. You see the scoring touchdown there by Keelan Brown and everything, but in the back of his mind is he's, he's thinking, but I still got two minutes and 35 seconds left on that clock, and, and that's an eternity uh, for U High when you put the ball back in their hands. And U High has two timeouts still left to go in this first half. Explosive offense. But uh, these two teams, uh, last year wasn't much of a contest. U High beat Zachary 26 to seven. But one thing we know of Zachary's teams, and we've said this before for those that have watched our broadcast, whenever we do a Zachary team, they are so much better in the second half than they are in the first half. Technically, this is still the first half of the season with it being week five of the high school football year. Uh-oh, Mike Collins now a chance to return it. Look out! Getting trucked on the play was Ethan Patrick O'Brien. Well, Jeff, I've been in that position before. 
And I will tell you what, I got to give my guy O'Brien some credit there. He did not get out the way. You know, I know a lot of kickers, Jeff, that was just just laid down. But watch here. He, uh, this is one where he gave it up for the team. The only thing I'm going to teach him is you can get a little bit lower. You don't have to expose all your rib cage. Just, hey, just go down and take the legs out. But I tell you what. He stayed in the. He stayed in. That's why his teammates are there hugging him and saying, "Hey, he did not. He did not jump out the way." But I tell you what, Hollins punished him. David Brewerton came out about 15 yards out on the field and gave him a high five. That's, you love that too. I mean, that might have been a touchdown saving tackle there by your. Uh, it was. I mean, he's the last guy, last line of defense. McKernan operating the offense here, and they hand it off to Hollins, and Hollins dragged down to the ground after a gain of about four. But for Zachary here, you just got to keep it in front of you. You know, look, you may have to give up some of the, a little bit of the five, six yard run game. You may have to give up a, a you know, a five, six, seven yard slant route. But what you can't do is you can't let them just go over the top here right before they have. Don't let them get a big play on you. Make them earn it. Make them drive it down the field. Second out and seven. McKernan will throw this time. Here comes a little pressure. Gets rid of it though, and it might have been, might have had his hand hit as he threw the football. I think that was Charles Selders coming off the edge and might have deflected that pass. And it just was a wobbly duck that fell incomplete. Well, Selders must have deflected. And I tell you what, Selders has been active this game. He's had a great game. There you go, getting around the edge and sure he got just got that elbow just enough to where. It affected the throw of McCurdy, but you can see you high. He was winding up, and he was going to take that big deep shot. And again, Zachary's got to be careful. If anything, just don't give up the big one. Make him earn it. Third down and seven. They bring the blitz. McKernan's got to get rid of it. Here's Christian Harris. Harris has got the first down and more. Harris across the 30. Down he goes at about the 25-yard line. Big play on third down for the Cubs, and they're back in business as they look to retake the lead. Wow, they can just beat you in so many ways. I mean, look, you take away the deep threat, and then Christian Harris just hangs around the line of scrimmage. Okay, you want to bring some pressure? I'll just get it to my 6'3", 230-pound wide receiver and he'll just run through you and make people miss and so I mean they can just they have so many different weapons and so many different ways to beat you 27 yards to the 25 yard line as they check with the sidelines on this play call first and 10 from the 25 yard line Hollins the running back John Gordon McKernan takes the snap plenty of time going to the corner of the end zone it's Micaiah Tong deflected at the last second Great job defensively by Tyler Judson, one of the best defensive backs in the area, an old Miss commitment who has 12 interceptions in his career, had eight of them last year. Well, this is not giving up on a play. Tyler Judson was just absolutely beat on this play. And the only thing, the receiver for you, High Tung, did not come back to the football. You got to go back and get that football. But, uh, you know, Judson was absolutely beat there, and but good job making it up and coming and getting that arm up there and not drawing the flag, not creating the contact before he got to the ball. Judson rated the 34th best player in the state according to 24-7 Sports. Second down and 10. They give it to Hollins, and he can't get away from Caleb Jackson. There is a flag down. Might be a face mask penalty. And... One of the few times Zachary was able to stop Hollins before he could get going. They look looks like they may have grabbed his face mask and a great defensive effort goes for naught. Yeah, yes. Let's see, that time Rathke on the offensive line, I believe, for you high just got beat. But uh, may get bailed out here, as you mentioned, on a on a face mask. That's a 15 yard <laughs> too. Yes, it's gonna go. Well, let's let's see if we can if we can take a look at it. obviously Burton's bad. I don't know if you saw it, but let's see if we can see where it comes in. Uh, that's uh, that's one of those ones where you know he. I would say it's see. a seven and a half yard penalty yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or a ten yard splitter. First and ten now at the inside the fourteen yard line or at about the 14-yard line. 
We got 64 seconds left here in a timeout. Looks like Zachary wants to talk about it here. Yeah, well, you can't take them to the locker room, and this is an important series right here. Minute and three seconds left, you can see on the clock, and if they can just hold them to a field goal, because remember now, U High gets the football to start the second half. Well, this week on Yearview's High School Football Recruiting Podcast, Over the Middle, Jeremy Crabtree is joined by Garden City Community College coach Jeff Sims. College coaches know Sims as a national championship winning coach and is one of the first people to develop a player personnel department in college football. He also coached more than 40 NFL players, including Jason Pierre-Paul, but many will recognize Sims from his appearance on season three of Netflix, Last Chance You. Also, Jeremy breaks down why recruiters have flocked to Tulsa's Booker T. Washington High School. All that and more on this week's episode of Over the Middle Podcast. You can check it out at yearview.com. First and 10 at the 14 yard line. Each team now has two timeouts left in this first half. 21-21. David Brewerton said he wanted to see the turnover chain used a lot tonight. So far, that has not happened. McKernan hit as he throws. Still got the football to Jordan Clark. Very close to the first down marker. I think he'll be a little bit short, but the Cubs are in business with 56 seconds now to go before halftime. This is where you got to give Mahaffey and his offense credit with McKernan and Clark. The timing and the precision on that route. I mean, McKernan gets the ball and then quickly it's, a, it's an, an out route on the far side of the field and able to connect with Clark. That's just beautiful football there. Second down and one. And a handoff. Gets Hollins all the way to about the one. And that's first and goal now inside the one yard line. Now I would think you high might want to take their time here a little bit before they <laughs> punch it into the end zone. Hey, you don't even want enough time on the clock to kick the ball off with these two teams. And they, they'll score from any number of ways. And let's see, the play clock is at 13. Game clock's at 35. Pop off in motion. And Hollins bulldozes his way into the end zone. Yeah, it just spreads you out and not sure. Didn't show you the jumbo package that time, but they spread you out and then that takes defenders out of the box a little bit. And, you know, Hollins is just a bull. I mean, he's, he's too tough, he's too strong. And, you know, you get down there mano a mano with him on the goal line. I like my chances with Hollins every time. And that's just the strength, lower body strength, just driving those legs and able to work himself into the end zone. Second touchdown run of the night for Hollins, who's had a big night here on game time. Garrett Fleming will line up for the extra point try. Put you high back up by a touchdown. I don't know. You got it. Okay. Well, look, with look. 24 seconds left, Zachary does have some dangerous return men. We'll see if Sean Burrell is okay, though. We saw him lip off the last time he returned to kick. Well, here you can see a better angle right there. Just you're not going to. One player is not going to not going to be able to bring him down, and that's just a good tough run there. By Hollins, obviously West Brady trying to fill the hole, but when Hollins gets his steam going, it's going to be difficult. Crown Trophy scoring drive. Tw 28-21 is our score. And so let's see what happens now. Well, you would expect maybe they'll try to squib it or do something, but uh, actually uh, you don't have Burrell no. on the field. You've got uh, you've got Jaden Williams out there, number four. Uh, and if I'm, you know, if I'm you high, the one person I'm not going to kick it to is number 19. Right. I mean that that is that it would be a critical mistake. Uh, and and you know, right now balls lined up on the far hash and Whitfield's lined up on the far hash, but either. Squib it, heck, even kicking it out of bounds might not be a bad idea. So let's see what Fleming decides to do here, or at least what he's been told to do. A squib kick, 
And it's still going to get to Whitfield, though, at the 11-yard line. Whitfield to the 25. Nice job by the coverage team to make sure he was not going to get ahead of steam there as he was shoved out of bounds by Cameron Dorsey. So let's see what Zachary decides to do with just 17 seconds. Down by seven. Coach Brewerton's team will get the ball to begin the second half. Keelan Brown, a good first half. Neither team turned it over. U High scored on all but one possession. Zachary scored on all but two possessions, right? Is that right? Am I right on that? Hey, if you said it, I'm good. <laughs> not going to challenge my partner there. Burrell you know? punted the football. Might have not made it on a, oh, they had the field goal block. That's right. So, yeah, so three out of five for Zachary. Here's the pass to Whitfield. Whitfield up to the 40-yard line, and then he is brought down to the ground. The Broncos do have a couple timeouts here. Seven seconds left, and it is a first down, so the clock is stopped. They'll line up here rather quickly. I think here, I mean, if you're going to take a shot, you got to take it here. I don't know that you'll be able to get two plays in. Yeah, I think they're going to say that's that. End of the first half. An exciting first half from Zachary High School with the U High Cubs leading the Zachary Broncos 28 to 21. In a matchup that we thought would produce some fireworks, it certainly has here through the first 24 minutes of this one. And Zachary is heading to the uh, locker room. U High heading back to their respective locker room. And uh, I'm not sure if we'll be able to get a coach or not. We'll see. But uh, the Cubs are going to feel pretty good about uh, where they stand at this point down by a touchdown. Yeah, I mean, it's the kind of contest we thought. They're smacker running down <laughs> Coach Mahaffey. Uh, you know, she... <laughs> The swimming the swim. ones. <laughs> Let's go down to the field and smack her. Coach, you knew, you knew you needed to be consistent in the run game. How's that been so far tonight? Uh, I think we've hit some spots. Some penalties have taken away big plays for us. Um, but I think offensively we've been able to, to get some things going. Uh, got to play a lot better defensively. I think we will. Um, but these guys are good on offense. they got a lot of playmakers. You just mentioned defense. You wanted to limit the big plays that they could have. How's that been so far? Not good. Uh, we got to do a better job. 19 is really good, uh, but they got some other guys out there making plays. We got to be a better team defense. Thanks, Coach. All right, thanks. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks a lot, Smacker. It is halftime from Zachary High School where the Broncos trail the U High Cubs 28 to 21. More coming up. This is game time on Your View, Louisiana. Game Time High School football action on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, the holiday season, and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. For live streaming, behind-the-scenes coverage, and more, check out yourview.com. Now Contour from Cox gets you right to the strange stuff. Something's coming. Something hungry for blood. Noble stuff. The crown must always win. Show me something dramatic. And orange stuff. Along with the best stuff on cable. Because Netflix is now on Contour. How awesome is this place? Just say it. Black Mirror. And get right to the fierce, funny, bold, and bingy stuff. Watch it all on Contour. Just say Netflix to get started. Watch the newest movies instantly with Movies On Demand from Cox. What's it like selling out there all alone? It's a feeling I can't describe. <laughs> Will you sail around the world with me? Bon voyage! <laughs> Should we be worried? Get below! I'm not leaving you! Get below now! Oh my God! Adrift. Movies On Demand from Cox. Just go to Channel One and choose all new movies. With Cox My Account, you can stay on top of things without having to call. Check statements and pay your bill instantly, so nothing gets by you. Keep an eye on the strength of your Wi-Fi and fix issues right under your nose by resetting your modem or set-top box. Even check TV listings. Sign into My Account at Cox.com today 
Ah. So you never miss a thing. Game Time on Your View is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. It's the West Feliciana Parish Halftime Show on Game Time on Your View, Louisiana. One of the great sponsors of our broadcast, Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance Companies. My name is Aaron Duran. I'm a Farm Bureau agent here in Zachary, the East Baton Rouge Parish. We're putting together a playground and a workout station. Got a lot of people came together. Met here early this morning and started working. And as you can see, we have several things up now. One's completed, the playground is on its way. Farm Bureau, as an organization, we donated monies towards the uh, workout station to you know, contribute to this park. Farm Bureau, we do these type of things with our community because we are the community. Uh, there's several parks and stuff in the community. This one special, uh, representing some of the fallen folks, you know, friends of ours in our community. So we are a Farm Bureau and our mission is to protect people. We, every day we have an opportunity to go out and we protect what's most important to our clients and to those around us, you know, their, their house, their cars, and most of all their life and their family. That's what we do and that's what we do every day and we're glad to do it. When Christy Anderson called me to, to see if I wanted to come help, I was more than happy to because that's what we do. We're real service, real people. We like to be getting down dirty just like we're doing today. Once again, we thank our great sponsors here on Game Time, Deerview, Louisiana, Farm Bureau Insurance Companies. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll introduce you to our Teachers of the Week from Uhi and Zachary. Watch the newest movies the best way possible with Movies On Demand from Cox. Captain Lando Calrissian. Hot Solo. If you come with us, you're in this life for good. Well, what do you know? Have I ever steered you wrong? <laughs> Solo, a Star Wars story, rated PG-13. The best way to watch movies is movies on demand from Cox. Just go to Channel One to order instantly. Drone Racing League pilot Wild Willie is testing his skills on the scariest course imaginable. His mom's house. Fortunately, he's using panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Because even a one second delay could mean trouble for everyone. Wall-to-wall -wall fast panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Wi-Fi at the speed of flight. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. Owen! Back for more, huh? Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. Jeanette, you know how during our date, we couldn't remember the name of that show we both liked. We're Cox customers. We can find it on Contour. Last nine viewed. My grandkids are here. <laughs> Home improvement shows. More like this. We liked House Hunters. That's the name of it. Grandpa, you have a girlfriend? We're not using labels. That's a yes. Watch more, search <laughs> less, because you're a Cox customer. Cox.com slash learn. Game time on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Back at halftime, University High leading Zachary 28 to 21. It's the West Feliciana Parish halftime show. Cubs up by a touchdown. Time to find out who our teachers of the week are from these two schools. And for that, we send it down to the field and smack her miles. We have Mr. Southall from Zachary and we have Coach Barrett from U High. Mr. Southall teaches some AP classes. How does this set up, set up the students for their futures? Well, in the social studies department at Zachary High School, we have four years of AP classes, so our kids are able to go through and get credit hours going to college, sometimes even up to uh, 12 more hours, so they can go into college and be prepared with, you know, starting off a lot of classes before they even get started. 
Mr. Southall does a lot at the school. He's also involved in the student government. What is Zachary's student government up to? We try to do a lot of things that help promote school spirit throughout the, the school throughout the year. We do things like kickball tournaments. We do volleyball tournaments. We've done ultimate frisbee. We've had talent shows, all kinds of things. Anything we can do to promote school spirit. Next week's homecoming, so we're going to have floats and parade th th things, decorations, all kinds of stuff going for Zachary. Thanks, Mr. Southall. We also have Coach Barrett from U High. He teaches middle school science, and he's also a coach for the U High softball team, which is a new program. Tell us a little bit about how that program has done so far. Oh, well, you know, five years ago, we didn't have a program, and uh, Coach Applegate and myself, we started the program and uh, from middle school and on the way up, and we are now one year into varsity, and last year we made it to Sulphur, and uh, it's been very successful. It really started with uh, growing our middle school program. Um, it, was, it was difficult to get off the ground, but now that we are finally in high school, um, we're doing really well, and with the help of your sister. Um, she's one of our pitchers. She's awesome. And um, it's just really grown, and uh, we look forward to the future. To be able to impact both the middle schoolers and the high schoolers at a K-12 school, what does that mean to you? Oh, it means a lot. Um, you know, I, I, I went into teaching because I love kids, and, and the same for coaching. Um, it's being a middle school teacher, you know, sixth grade especially, uh, they read, they just soak up everything you say. And uh, it's great to see the smiles and the happiness on their face. I teach science, and so they're, they're so interested in everything that we talk about. And so it, it's, it's pretty awesome to be able to influence children. Thanks, and congrats, Coach Barrett. So After this, we will have our Student of the Week from Zachary. That's coming up. Sorry, now, now. Yes. This is Hunter from Zachary. He is really involved in the Future Farmers of America. Tell us a little bit about that organization. Okay, so um, right now we are working towards uh, getting together a day of service and what that involves is all of our clubs at the high school. We're just going to organize them all together and go out into the town and we're just going to do a lot of volunteer work, sort of just clean up the city, that kind of thing. After high school, Hunter wants to major in political science. Why do you want to do that? Uh, I really want to go into government. I want to legislate policies that are going to make a positive impact on the world. I really just want to make the world a better place. It's a really exciting game tonight, and you have a really special outfit on. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, so the theme was um, out of this world. So it's just alien stuff, uh, stars, space, that kind of thing. So I just went with some glitter to uh, sort of represent like stars and stuff, and then just everything else was uh, space, basically. <laughs> Thanks, Hunter. Back to you, Jeff. Thanks a lot, Smacker, and congratulations to our scholars and teachers of the week from these two great institutions. We'll be back after this. More of Game Time on Yearview, Louisiana. Gather your friends and family to catch up on all the fall fun with Cox On Demand. Miguel? I'm going to be a musician. Help me follow my dream. I can help you. Come on. Who's ready to fly? <laughs> again, again. Did you unlock a book? Oh, no. Reach deep down and let the scary out. Oh, scary. Up top. The Fall Fun Collection, now on demand. Hey, Mr. Thompson, you know how you were so mad about going over on your mobile data plan? Well, we're Cox customers, and this is one of over 500,000 Cox hotspots, totally included in most Cox internet packages. Look, go to your mobile settings, click on Cox Wi-Fi, then plug in your Cox username and password, and then you're on Wi-Fi. And you can, like, stream that video of my band, literally no problem. Find free hotspots, because you're a Cox High-Speed Internet customer. Cox.com slash learn. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. Owen! Back for more, huh? Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. Jeanette, you know how during our date, we couldn't remember the name of that show we both liked. We're Cox customers. We can find it on Contour. Last nine viewed. My grandkids are here. <laughs> Home improvement shows. More like this. We liked House Hunters. That's the name of it. Grandpa, you have a girlfriend? We're not using labels. That's a yes. Watch more, search less, because you're a Cox customer. 
Cox.com slash learn. Back on the West Feliciana Parish halftime show with U High leading the Zachary Broncos 28 to 21. The Zachary marching band entertaining the big crowd that is here at Zachary High School. Let's take a look at our first half highlights as we saw seven touchdowns in the first half and let's show you all of them in what was a very exciting 24 minutes of football. Zachary got it going first. Keelan Brown connecting with Chandler Whitfield on the slant pattern as uh, those two guys have been a good combination here so far tonight. John Gordon McKernan winding up and throwing deep and then no one able there to defend Micaiah Tung who outruns the Zachary defense. That would tie the football game up at seven apiece. The university would take the lead. Mike Hollins, just a truck on this play, as uh, showing some good moves. Bouncing off two, three, four Zachary Bronco defenders to get into the end zone, and the Cubs had their first lead of the night. As you will watch that one again, that one was so good, it's worth uh, a second look. But you get an idea of just how strong this young man is. That's a good Zachary defense that he is just pushing around to get into the end zone. Then how about this little touchdown run from Jaquillan Roy, the LSU commitment gets in there. And that was a big touchdown because that was fourth and goal just outside the one yard line. And Zachary was hoping to come up with a big defensive stand, but Jaquillan Roy plunges into the end zone for the score there as Chad Mahaffey goes into a little bit of, I want to say the trick bag, but goes a little deeper in the playbook on that one. And then a, a little bit more of a customary touchdown run here for UI. Mike Hollins getting into the end zone for a second time. Hollins having another huge season for the Cubs. He now has 13 touchdowns on the season. Keelan Brown finds a seam, gets a good block from Buddy Davis, and he gets into the end zone as Keelan Brown scores. The big crowd here at Zachary enjoys that one. Uh, and that's Hollins again. I think we've seen that one again, but that is uh, a replay of an earlier touchdown, but he got into the end zone. And let's take a look at your first half stats from this one. The rushing yards, Broncos leading there, but Probably the big difference is what John Gordon McKernan has been able to do in the passing game, in particular getting the ball to Micaiah Tung, as Zachary has not been able to figure out how to defend Mr. Tung. Yeah, no, I mean, that's right. Uh, you know, they've, uh, they've been able to uh, get the ball to Tung and some of the other skilled players. And, you know, really I'm seeing Holland starting to pick up and, and really get going in this game. But, you know, Zachary has kept this within one score. And look, if they can keep it, within one score, get this game into the fourth quarter. This could be that challenge that Yuha uh, has not seen yet this year. Have to see if Sean Burrell is healthy for the second half. That's a big loss for the Zachary secondary and also their return game not to have him out on the football field. We'll have more of the West Feliciana Parish halftime show when we come back with the Cubs up by seven. This is game time. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new contour from Cox. Light the candle, read this out loud. It's to make things start. She isn't gone. Hereditary. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. Do you have osteoarthritis in one or both knees? If you have osteoarthritis in one or both knees, are you on Medicare, Obamacare, or other health insurance? If you answered yes, you may be eligible for a prescription strength solution for osteoarthritis of the knees. Covered by Medicare at little to absolutely no cost to you. Our experienced staff will work with your doctor and handle all of your Medicare or insurance paperwork. Find out for free by calling the Back and Knee Pain Center. Call 1-800-796-7238. Watch the newest movies instantly with Movies on Demand from Cox. I am STEM, the system operating your body for you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Someone killed your wife. I can help you find him. You didn't know that I'm a ninja. While I am state of the art, I am not a ninja. Movies on Demand from Cox. Just go to Channel One and choose all new movies. 
Medical alarms for people who fall or have medical emergencies. You never think you'll need one until you do. Hi, I'm Lonnie Anderson for Advantage Alert. Today, our advanced systems locate and protect people inside and outside their homes, plus when they're on the road, allowing users with the press of a button to speak with an operator who can summon help. And even after 30 years, Advantage Alert's products remain amazingly affordable. Call 800-915-0190. Game Time on Your View is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season, and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. John Gordon McKernan and the U-High Cubs getting ready for the second half. They got a touchdown lead over the Zachary Broncos. Earlier today, we had a chance to meet the Zachary Bronco cheerleaders. My name is Jamie Bird, and I'm a special educator here at Zachary High School, as well as the cheer coach. I have 17 students, me and another fellow teacher, um, and our program is based on life after high school. About four years ago, Shayla and Ariana were my only girls in the classroom, and so I brought them to a game, um, and they just cheered their hearts out and danced and had fun and laughed and smiled and the fans embraced them and encouraged them. Um, and I overheard Ariana say this was the best night of her life. Just from that, I realized that these kids and these girls just need like a social life outside of high school. So a lot of um, children with special needs don't really have that. And so this was just an opportunity for them um, just to get involved. I'm just super proud of our community and our student body, and so I'm just proud to be a Bronco. Heartwarming story there on the Zachary Broncos cheerleading squad. That's great to see something like that. 28-21 uh, is our score. The Cubs, there you take a look at them in action tonight. Had a lot to cheer about tonight. Cheering in front of a big crowd here at Zachary High School. They are packed in. A lot of people have been waiting for this game, in particular since last December when both of these teams won a state championship a year ago, and they did it in convincing fashion. Zachary beating Hondale and the University Cubs defeating De La Salle. Well, yeah, because you had three teams from the Baton Rouge area go on and win state championships, but then you have to resolve, you know, who's the best in the Baton Rouge area because Catholic High won a state championship, Zachary won a state championship, U High, so now all of those teams play each other. Obviously, U High has beat Catholic High this year. Catholic High beat Zachary, but now Zachary's playing you had a night and kind of the battle of the best in the area. And it has shaped up that way through the first half anyways with both of these teams going back and forth. Zachary will get the ball when we resume action here in the second half at Zachary High School. But it's been impressive to watch. These two teams, a lot of studs out on the field, a lot of dudes out there making some plays. Micaiah Tung has been very impressive for U High. Mike Howlins is too. And then Zachary Keelan Brown having a very good game, but might need a little help. They need, eventually, I think, Jason, Zachary will have to steal a possession, whether that's on an onside kick, whether they get a turnover. I don't know how how well they'll be able to slow Zachary down. They've, they've stopped him once on Zachary's first, or excuse me, U High's first drive. It stalled out around midfield, but other than that, the Cubs have been really good on offense. Yeah, they need a strip fumble or something. McKernan just doesn't make a lot of mistakes, but I'll tell you what, for Zachary, Whitfield has had a tremendous first half, both running the ball, uh, catching passes, and uh, you know, just doing the whole shebang here for Zachary, but I think that combination of him and Keelan Brown and Keelan Brown again getting more active with his legs, but they're going to need some other players to step up and make some plays. 
And Chandler Whitfield, four catches for 118 yards and a touchdown. He's also rushed it four times for 65 yards. And then Keelan Brown being that dual threat quarterback that he is, five of 10, 79 yards throwing and seven rushes for 41 yards touchdown rushing and passing. John Gordon McKernan, very efficient here tonight. He's thrown for nearly 200 yards, 13 of 19 for 199 yards. Mike Howlins has rushed for 73 yards and two scores. Micaiah Tung, five catches for 86 yards and a touchdown. And then Dorian Harris has four catches for 80 yards. Well, you know this is a big game when you have superstar players coming to watch it. Smacker Miles is standing next to one right now. Yes, as many of you know, this is Darius Geis, and it was pretty tough to pull him away from the selfie line he had. Why is it important for you to be such a big part of this community? You know, in the high school community, you know, I did a lot of great things at Catholic High, and um, I'm just out here to support you, High and Zachary. Um, I really don't care who wins. I'm just here for, for the game, for a great game. It's 28-21 at halftime. Uh, you High has the lead so far, but... You know, I just like giving back and showing the support to the kids and stuff. You know, I know a lot of people look up to me, so I just try to stay active in the community. Darius, as he mentioned, played at Catholic High. He was part of that Louisiana high school football. What did that do for your life? It did a lot. You know, um, that high school changed my life in many ways, you know, on and off the field. And um, it's just important to me that I be here, to be honest, especially when I'm back in town. He mentioned being back in town. Darius is no stranger to adversity. I have no doubt he will overcome this one, but how is that recovery process going? Recovery is actually pretty good. I'm um, on week six as of Tuesday this past week, and um, I'm walking pretty fine, getting all my extension back, all my rotation back, and uh, seems like I never missed a beat. <laughs> I was going to say, it looks like you're walking well and in staying yeah. in good shape. Thanks, Darius. Thanks, Mac. Darius Geis out on the field next year. Tough break for him to have the torn ACL in the preseason. But if there's a season uh, he had to miss, I'm glad it's against my Saints, you know, because I, I, they're on the schedule this year. And so, you know, I was already being that we went to the same high school and Jeff, you, you and I have covered Darius and we followed his career. Yeah, it was going to put me in a difficult position watching him run against the Saints, but I'm, I'm a Saints guy. <laughs> We begin the second half, Fleming the kickoff. And this will be taken at the 11 yard line. I believe that's Chandler Whitfield it is, but a great job by the coverage unit. Makaya Tung out there doing all three phases tonight, wrapped him up. Forward progress at the 23 yard line and Keelan Brown will lead the Broncos back out onto the field. Important drive here for Zachary. I mean, they need to again, establish some rhythm on offense. Here you go, a look at the return Whitfield trying to squirm his way through there and find a hole. Good job by Tongue. And, you know, they're using first teamers on kickoff coverage. That tells you how important it is for Mahaffey to get good kickoff coverage and not allow the Zachary High team to start with good offensive position, field the, position. The numbers for Keelan Brown started off really good, maybe tailed off a little bit there in the second quarter. He'll need to have a big second half for the Broncos to overcome this seven-point deficit. R.J. Allen in the running in the backfield with him on this four-wide receiver set for the Broncos. Brown's got time to throw, and now the pocket starts crashing around him, and he dumps it off, and this is complete. And out across the 40-yard line, that is Jaden Williams getting a chance to catch the football. And, First down for the Broncos. And this is where Keelan Brown has improved from sophomore to junior year. At first, his eyes, watch his head is up when he's running. Previous years, he would have just taken off with this football, but watch how smart he is running the football. Yes, he could go get a couple yards, but watch him pull up, eyes down the field, sees a wide open receiver, hits him and gets the easy first down. And most importantly, Jeff, he doesn't take a lick on that play running the football. 19 yard pass play, Jarden Gilbert with the tackle out of bounds at the 42 yard line now for the Broncos. And RJ Allen gets the carry there, runs into a wall and only gets about two yards as the Cubs bring him down. Jacob Burke there defensively to wrap him up and bring him down. And that's, that's the style of running that we've used to see from the Zachary team. Real hard running out of that, out of that shotgun spread formation, yeah, yeah. running off tackle and really just, just pounding you. Second down at about seven now for the Broncos as they get the play call from the offensive side. 
or from the near sidelines. Brown and a quick pass and another catch by Jaden Williams, the junior. Gets it to the 50, picks up about five more, so third down and two right at the 50-yard line. Well, we may see more Jaden Williams this half. Burrell does not seem to be in the lineup here. And Chris Simmons is out, too. Yeah, we saw him hop off, so that, that's two, two big-time key pieces of the Zachary wide receiving core that they may not have available for them this half. That means other players are going to have to step up. See Sean Burrell, he is on the sidelines. Looks like maybe he's strictly defense so far tonight, or at least the rest of the night. Third down and two at the 50-yard line. Brown fakes the pitch, runs straight ahead, and he will not get the first down. The Cubs defense shuts him down right at the line of scrimmage. Jaquil and Roy, Donald Bernard also there, the Navy commitment. And that's a big defensive play there. Fourth and two, Sean Burrell coming out there to punt. Well, if you got a good fake punt on your hands right now, or you got that in your playbook, this is the time to unleash it. 0 for 3 now for Zachary on third downs after converting on their first three. Hold him up! Fourth and two. New High knows a fake could be here, but instead Burrell end over end punt. Christian Harris on the run. Big collision at the 22 yard line. Good to see everyone's able to get up and walk away from that. That was some major contact down on the field. David Beefley, a backup linebacker, bringing down Christian Harris. And the Cubs up by a touchdown. Have the football at their own 32-yard line. Well, here you go. Just a big-time collision there as Christian Harris feeling that ball with a full head of steam. And, you know, if there's one area, that, again, and I've talked about it a little bit, where Zachary may be missing something from years past is that third and two or third and one situation where they just don't have the bigger backs, and again, the diff one of the differences between Keelan and Lindsey Scott is he's not as strong running off a tackle. At the 32-yard line, and they give it to Mike Hollins, and Hollins gets hit by Maverick McClure, and a couple of other Bronco teammates bring him down. Hold him for about a yard there. There's a look at Maverick McClure. Actually, that's Wes Brady. And Wes's grandfather, Glenn Brady, is in the U High Hall of Fame. He coached uh, for the Cubs in the uh, 50s and 60s. And then Wes's dad, who went on to play uh, at Louisiana Tech. Oh, oh bad snap here. But Kernan picks it up, though. And he'll have to run out of bounds. Uh oh. Oh, gonna... and then they push there. But I don't see a flag. I just think McKernan may have tripped up, but he's okay. Well, there was a push over there. The question is, is did he push him while he was still in bounds? But the Zachary guy from my vantage point, there's the high snap. That could have been the turnover, Jeff, that Zachary needed. Obviously able to field it clean and really get some pop. But here's the push Ooh. right there. And and the question is, is uh, you know, that's that's one of those ones where he was looked like he, uh, I don't know. No flag there. Third down and 12. <laughs> Well, can the Broncos deep ends come up with a three and out here? At the 30 yard line, McKernan has time to throw and it's incomplete. Micaiah Tung and a couple of defenders were there and a very rare three and out as McKernan's got to pick himself off the turf. And a very rare, rare time that McKernan has been under a lot of duress and actually hitting the turf. We don't necessarily see that. That's why the bad throw. So Chandler Whitfield will stand at about his own 32-yard line to return this punt from Garrett Fleming, who will stand at his own 15. It's an opportune time here for Zachary to get good field position. Got to feel the, feel the punt cleanly. Chandler Whitfield has had two touchdowns called back this season because of penalties. He's averaging 35 yards a punt return, and that one's not even near the uh, same area code as Chandler Whitfield as they punt away from him. And Zachary will have good field position at around midfield. Let's send it down to the field, I believe. And 
Smacker Miles has a guest along the sideline. Smacker? Boys, I have Jason Green from Peak Performance here. He does a lot for high school football, and he's been on the U High sidelines all night. We just talked to Darius Geis, who's had an ACL injury. If Darius was a high school player, what would you be doing for him right now? Well, you know, we'd be heavily into the rehab. These mid-season injuries and even season-ending injuries after they, they have their surgery or they've seen the orthopedic surgeon and uh, or, 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 you know, their doctor, then we get them in and rehab them. I and it's really a focused rehab. It's, it's going to be highly uh, intentional to them returning to play. Uh, if you have a sprain or a strain, then, you know, it could be out three to four weeks. And then we're going to do dry needling, ACE stem, manual therapy, functional exercise, all that kind of stuff. And then we'll get you back on the field as soon as quickly as possible. And then for those season ending injuries, we're just trying to get you back for the next year. Peak performance has been at several of our year view games. Who all do you cover and help out in this football season? Oh, we have great partnerships with great orthopedists and, and physician groups here in town. And uh, we cover 10 high schools in the area. We've been doing it for a long time, enjoy it, part of the community. And uh, we're just happy to be able to serve the community and serve the athletes. It's a win-win. Thanks, Jason. Back to you, Jeff. All right, Smackers, second down and 10 at the 50-yard line. Thanks again to Peak Performance Physical Therapy and everything they do for all the student athletes out there and the weekend warriors. Keelan Brown under intense pressure spins away like Drew Brees out there as he gets up to the 47-yard line before he got hammered by Donald Berniard who uh, made the tackle on a third down and long. And all of a sudden, Jason, we got a defensive, defensive struggle game. on our yeah. hands. You say Drew Brees here. The difference is, <laughs> is Keelan kept his eyes open. <laughs> Drew, Brees, Drew Brees was relying on some of them saints from above. <laughs> he closed his eyes and spun. <laughs> third and seven for Keelan Brown and the Broncos. They don't want to waste this opportunity here with very good field position. Well, Zachary's offense without a guy like Chris Simmons. Showing some of the effects here. Brown rolling out. Throws as he runs, going deep. Double coverage, and it's incomplete. That's close. I, mean, I was shocked, baby. Will Safford was one of the defenders there. Almost got his hands on it as they tried to get the ball again to Jaden Williams. And also there was Josh Slaughter. Good job by you, Hyde, not interfering. Sometimes the, the easiest plays to draw interference is when the ball is underthrown a little bit because the receiver comes back to it, and I thought that might have been uh, a pass in it. When you, you see the defensive back didn't get his head around, and the receiver works his way back to the football. And typically, there's contact. Look like a little bit, but there, no call. Fortunate there. And, you're right. We've got a defensive battle now, Jeff. Sean, Zachary's punting the football. Yeah, Sean Burrell is out there, and Mr. Christian Harris ready to return it. Another high punt by Burrell. Harris has to call fair catch at the 17-yard line. 7.21 left to go in the third quarter. No score in this third quarter as you high lead Zachary 28-21 to on game time. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. Light the candle. Read this out loud. It's to make things start. She isn't gone. Hereditary. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. Drone Racing League pilot Wild Willie is testing his skills on the scariest course imaginable. His mom's house. Fortunately, he's using panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Because even a one second delay could mean trouble for everyone. Wall-to-wall -wall fast panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Wi-Fi at the speed of flight. 28-21, U High leading Zachary, and the Cubs have the football back with 7:21 left to go in the third quarter. Jeff Palermo, Jason Aquire, and Smacker Miles down on the sidelines for this entertaining game between defending champs in their respective divisions and classes. Zachary, the defending 5A champ. U High, the defending Division II champ. John Gordon McKernan. After a three and out last time for the Cubs, they give it to Hollins, and Hollins, there's a flag down. Maverick McClure also in on the stop was Elijah Hayes, who has nearly 
two dozen tackles on the season coming into the game, but this is going to go against you high. I'll tell you what, if there is one thing Coach Mahaffey is going to, whether they win this game or not, Coach Mahaffey is going to focus his guys on the number of penalties on running plays, and it is just hard for Hollins to get in a rhythm or this offense sometimes to get in a rhythm when you keep having these infractions running plays. This one's going to back them up deep in their own territory. Fourth penalty for the Cubs. And it's going to be about first down and 19 as the Zachary student section having a lot of fun here tonight. With the ball at the 10 yard line. Four penalties, 40 yards for you high all of them on offense. Hollins gets the ball. Harris is a lead blocker for him and he gets it to the 17 yard line. Taylor Milton. One of the defenders there to make the stop for the Broncos. A little stretch play here yeah, for you. Yeah, and, and, and you know, you're going to say, hey, not a big yardage, but just the patience there for Hollins. I mean, again, the vision, this is going to be a special back at the next level. I mean, the patience, the vision, and then when he sees the crease, able to have the speed, the burst to exploit it. Caleb Knight also in on the tackle. So second and 10 for the 18, and another bad snap. And McKernan falls on it back wow. at the four yard line. That's twice. That's twice here recently that the snap has been high, and this time it's really going to have them pinned back again. Just high, difficult for McKernan to handle. And that deep in your territory, he did the right thing. You've just got to protect the football at that point. You cannot give Zachary the football second or first and goal to go. Paul Phillips is the center. Third down and a long way to go. They got to get to the 28 yard line. So third down and 24 from the four yard line. McKernan from his own end zone. Gets a clean snap that time. He's under pressure. Now winds up throws and it's incomplete. Way out of bounds as he had Wes Brady breathing down his neck. And now Zachary's got a really good opportunity here. Now wait a minute here, there's a timeout on the field, but that might be just a hydration oh, yeah. timeout, and it is. So with 5.47 left to go in the third, we'll watch this again. Wes Brady, nobody blocked him. Yeah, and, and also, if had he completed this to Christian Harris, it's good coverage. It wasn't going to be a first down anyway, but I tell you what, credit both of these defensive coaches. They probably went in at half and said, hey, look, we're blowing coverages, we're not playing well, and the first half was an offensive explosion, and you know, midway through the third quarter, this has been a defensive game and both teams really playing well defensively. Now, some both teams have shot themselves in the foot a little bit. That time you high on a high snap, but uh, good defensive job here by both clubs. You high has had a very difficult first half of the season. They've played some good opponents, Southern Lab, Catholic, and they've won them all convincingly. But now that they get into district play next week against Brule, it lightens up. This is not a very tough district for UI. So the next five weeks, chance for them to tune some things up before they get into the Division II playoffs. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I, there's you just don't see after the Zacker game teams that can really challenge them. Although I'll tell you, not that they will, but that Baker team is much improved this year. Garrett Fleming deep in his own end zone here to punt this football away. Let's see if Zachary comes after it or they set up the return. Whitfield only standing at the 41 yard line. And it's not a great punt. Again, they kick it away from Whitfield and Zachary will have great field position at the U high 34. That is their best starting field position of the night. Well, if the Broncos can't get it done here, I don't know if they'll be able to ever get it done in the second half, but what an interesting third quarter for the Cubs. They've run six plays for negative seven yards in the second half. Zachary's got seven plays for 30 yards. Well, either, again, these defensive coaches went in and made the right adjustments or the offenses fell asleep at the half, but I, I think where Zachary has the ball now, and this could be four down territory for the remaining of the drive. Give the football here to Allen, and Allen just not much running room on the near side. Bunch of Cubs there to bring him down. Berniard, one of the defenders there, Donald Berniard, who's committed to Navy. There you look at him. This is a guy that really gets after it. Known as Biscuit. 
Smart guy, football junkie. Now, how do you think he gets the name Biscuit, Jeff? <laughs> he eats a lot of biscuits, I think. <laughs> I, I'm not exactly sure. We asked Chad Mahaffey that earlier this year, and he, he's not biscuit, exactly huh? sure. Uh, yeah. Second down and nine. David Brewerton wishes he had a Donald Berniard on his defensive line, too. Coach Brewerton telling us this week, you just sit back when you watch the U-High game tape and just marvel at the talent that they have on that football field. Keelan Brown gets out of the gets out of the pressure, flag down at the 40. So what gain he was able to get looks like it might be coming back. As Fred Earhart will wow. tell us it's holding. Well, we saw you high had their fair share of holding penalties on the last drive, and now this one's gonna cause Zachary because where they had the ball, I was thinking it could have been four down territory. Fourth penalty of the night for the Broncos. But now I'm back here at midfield. Yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to really change the play calling and the uh, you know the the concept here for for Zachary being backed up. You gotta gotta try to pick some of this back up here. Let's see if they run a screen with Chandler Whitfield. It's second down and 25 at the 50 yard line. After the drive started at the 35. Brown will keep it, run straight ahead, and he splits a couple of tacklers, and it was almost wow. to pay dirt there. Big run by Keelan Brown on second and 25. Gets 19 of it back right there. Unbelievable. I tell you what, he is a shoestring away from breaking this thing. He just exploits that hole with so much authority and so quick. I mean, boom, just shedding tacklers down. Again, the difference in running styles between him and Scott, you know, Brewton saying Scott's a little bit more shiftier and Keelan Brown likes to just kind of run straight ahead and you saw a good dose of him, not making a lot of cuts, but just straight ahead. Well, now it brings him back into four down territory with the football at the 31 yard line. Three wide receivers to the far side, the one wide receiver to the near side is Jaden Williams. Brown looks to his right, pump fakes. Here comes some pressure. Keelan Brown will go down a huge sack. That's Just big. what the doctor ordered for the Cubs. Jacob Burke making another great defensive play. There's your guy when you need a big play for you high on defense. It's Burke and uh, loss of 12. You know, this is this is huge because Zachary, as you mentioned, Jeff, probably would have gone forward on fourth down now and being backed up here. It looks like Brewerton is going to continue to play the field position game with you high and actually punt the football. William Gusman also in the backfield there is you high their defensive coordinator Andy Martin dials up the blitz. Sean Burrell has done a nice job punting the football getting it up in the air really not giving Christian Harris an opportunity to return. He stands at his own 11 yard line. And Burrell, the left-footed punter, he's pretty good at it. It don't go far, but Harris has a chance to return this, but there are too many Broncos in his way. Good job by Zachary on the coverage, tackled by Kenyon Martin. Yeah, you're right. He's getting, it's not, it's not a deep punt, but he's getting enough hang time to where those Zachary cover guys can get down there and corral Christian Harris, and it's been effective because if you're not giving him any yards on the return, then it's been a good punt. First and 10 at the 18 yard line. Chad Mahaffey gets his offense together. They try to get something going here. They have had some missed snaps. They've had a, they've had a holding penalty that really cost them. So they got to cut down on the mistakes here. Meanwhile, Zachary's defense probably a little bit uh, more confident now after stopping you high. From the 17 here for the Cubs. The pitch to Hollins. Hollins, he's running downhill here, Jason. Get out of his way. Nobody's going to catch him. To the 20. Forget it. Big time run for Mike Hollins, his third touchdown run of the night. 82 yards for the senior. Well, I bet you Darius Geis on the sidelines going to appreciate that one. 
you know, but Mike Hollins, uh, again, he's just the backbone of this offense. And when things aren't going right, Jeff, how good is it to have a number seven back there that you can just pitch it to? They've been a little out of sync with McKernan in the passing game. But here, let me just give it to my workhorse. Good blocking out front for you high. And then, you know, people say, oh, he's not as fast. Look, I don't see anybody out there on Zachary's team that can catch him. So he's the guy's got speed too that goes along complements his strength. Christian Harris and Makaya Tung, great job blocking for Hollins. Chad Mahaffey was disappointed in last week's game where they never were able to break any long runs with Hollins against West Feliciana. He was hoping to get a couple of big runs from his senior back. That was a huge one, maybe a backbreaker for the Zachary Broncos, who now have to try to overcome a 14-point deficit. Well, and this is where Uhai tries to apply the knockout blow. Again, you see Hollins here, just great, great blocking. I mean, give a lot of credit to the receivers maintaining their blocks. And the one thing Mahaffey is going to be happy about on this play is that there was no holding call, <laughs> you know? You know, because there's been so many hankies out there on the big, long runs, and this time it's probably just gasping and saying, thank God that I didn't get a, didn't get a holding call on that long run there. Hollins up to 14 touchdowns now on the season. The most outstanding player in last year's Division II title game. And uh, he certainly needs to catch his breath. That's a guy that, um, as Chad Mahaffey, probably feels a little bit better. There's a look at the uh, ITI Technical College scoring drive. Just one play it took, 82 yards, and it has quieted the Zachary side of the field, but there's a kid in Mike Collins who really grew up idolizing Nick Brosett, who, of course, is U uh, High's leader in yards rushing and touchdowns. And just like Nick Brosett, Nick Brosett started playing varsity football for U High in the eighth grade. Hollins also started really young in his career, so he's been able to put up the monster numbers. Last year, he rushed for over 1,500 yards, and He's on pace to do that again here this season. As you look at him tonight, 166 yards and three touchdowns. Had three touchdowns against Mandeville. Had three touchdowns against West Feliciana. And he gets the hat trick again here tonight against the Broncos. Short, high kick. Zachary's got to go get on it. And they do. Wow. I, I think for a second there, Zachary's Jamal Woodard forgot wait a minute I gotta go pick <laughs> yeah. that football up and yeah. Drew Nettles kind of in his face the wide receivers coach saying son it's a live ball you gotta go get it yeah a lot of times those up backs aren't used to having the ball kicked to it but you're right it's kind of a pooch punt you high kind of came out and surprised him a little bit with good placement there just you're just trying to hit those gaps and wow. uh, almost an opportunity for people to jump on that football recovered for you high all right, Keelan Brown's got to work his magic here now, down by two touchdowns with 2.30 left to go in the third quarter. Well, the pressure's on for this Zachary offense. They know, and the sidelines know, Brewerton, uh, you got to get something on this drive. I mean, you, you, you got it's now in a 14-point margin, and you got to put something on the scoreboard. Design run for Brown, and Brown hoping to get a few blocks, but he at least gets eight yards on that play. Josh Slaughter, who has really become a good tackler for U High, was in on the stop there. No turnovers in this game. U High forced three of them last week in the win over West Feliciana. And we, do we have a flag? We do. Oh man. Offense, number 19. See, that's a, that's a backbreaker. I mean, that's gonna get, you have a good positive first down run, being second and short now. Well, it is a spot of the foul penalty, so it's only first and 14. But we commented about the really good blocking by Christian Harris and Micaiah Tung and Mike Holland's touchdown run. Chandler Whitfield, Zachary's outstanding wide receiver, trying to do the same for Keelan Brown, but got called for the holding. Just over two minutes left to go in this third quarter. Broncos have not scored in the second half. And this time he gives it to Kyle Landry and nothing happening there. Again, Jacob Burke is playing a very big second half, had a huge sack on Keelan Brown on the last drive and this time stops Kyle Landry. 
Yeah, and Zachary's contending to sputter a little bit here on offense, but look, credit this U High defense. They've kind of, you know, Chad Mahaffey talked about it going into half that, hey, we've given them too many big plays and they've got some explosive players. And he talked specifically about number 19, Chandler Whitfield, and he's been quiet this second half. Second and 14 now. Four men rushing. Now Brown goes deep. Good coverage, though, and it's incomplete. Oh, got the flag. Flag going to be called on Josh Slaughter. He can't believe it. He thought he had outstanding coverage. It looked pretty good. I've seen some that were more questionable, but let's see. You know, sometimes from our vantage point, Jeff, it's hard to see whether there's a bump in there, but this looked like just good man-to-man -man coverage here, but. Ooh, that's pretty good. I mean, the the you can't see that right arm. That's the only no. Yeah. It's, it's it's away so from the yeah, body. The, that's the only well, thing. We've seen is, more uh, contact yeah, than that tonight. That's right. That's right. The only thing I would say is he didn't get his his head turned around. And sometimes you'll draw the flag just based on that. But I tell you what, that that looked like pretty good coverage by Slaughter, and that really bails this Zachary offense. They needed something positive, and obviously that'll. And they were backed up. That'll give them a first down. Ball at the 41-yard line with 70 seconds to go. Keelan Brown taking a look at what's going on at the sidelines as he gets the play call. They wanted to contain him tonight to the U-High Cubs, and especially here in the second half, they have done that. But a fresh... Set of downs here for the Broncos after the pass interference penalty. And Brown will roll to his right. Fires one and it's incomplete. Good coverage there as they try to get the ball to Whitfield. But William Gusman was right there and it's second and 10. Well, and Zachary just trying to move the pocket a little bit. And these are probably RPOs, you know, run pass option. And if it's not there, it gives Keelan Brown a chance to run it. The ball is just slightly behind Whitfield there and unable to come up with it. 63 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Kyle Landry in the backfield with Brown. No Chris Simmons. He's been out since the first half. Uh-oh. Brown avoids the first tackler but falls to the turf. Brighton Constantine came on the blitz untouched. Forced Brown out of the pocket and then he slipped to the ground and it's third down and 13. Second sack of this third quarter for this tough Cubs defense. I don't know how he slips this first one, but God, Constantine had a, a line on him and uh, again, his feet came out, but looked like he was pretty well contained there. But now this is a this is a pretty big third down. It's gonna be a difficult third down because it's a, a third and fairly long here. What does all that mean, Jeff? Well, see those faces? Flair, uh, right? yeah. I'd go with the Ric Flair play. Yeah. <laughs> see what happens. Third and 13. Here comes the screen. They get it over to Chris Hilton. Hilton's got world-class speed. He's got the first down and more. All the way to the 31-yard line. We told you back in the first half, this will be a superstar here at Zachary. And he just flashed that right there. Well, we know what the Rick Flair play is now. It's, it's get it to Hilton. And, that, and he shows you a bit of flair here and why he's going to be so special. He's been quiet, fairly quiet. But you can see here he's got good running ability. Ability, good open speed, open field speed, and that was a big, big pickup that Zachary needed. I mean, this is a huge play for Zachary. Uh, they were trying to go after that football. Gilbert tried to get it. Constantin tried to get it, but he holds on for the 29-yard pass play, 30-yard pass play, and that is the final play of the third quarter. Broncos down by two touchdowns, but they are back into you high territory. Fourth quarter coming up. This is game time on your view. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new contour from Cox. Owen. Back for more, huh? Run! Ah! I have to see this. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. In the blink of an eye, cities fall, heroes rise. 
A heartbeat skips as a man slips gravity's grip. And heartbreak leaps from the brink in a blink. Just think of all the games, teams, hopes, and dreams that live and die because greatness lies in the blink of an eye. This is the sports app on Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. In three and a half weeks, the Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. $16.5 million in each of your bank accounts. Came on. Why do you need to do this? Because it's what I'm good at. Ocean's 8. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. After an explosive first half here at Zachary High School, just one touchdown in that third quarter by U High, but the Broncos are on the move. First down and 10 at the 32. Glad he could join us here on your view as they hand the ball off to Whitfield, but there is nothing happening. The Cubs have shut down the Broncos running game. That's William Gusman in the backfield again, and they lose a few yards. It was tough sledding in the third quarter. U High just 75 yards of total offense in the third quarter, 82 of it coming on that touchdown run by Hollins. And Zachary had just 32 yards, and 30 of it was on that pass play to Chris Hilton. Well, and you better believe, again, Coach Mahaffey went in the locker room saying, number 19 is who I'm worried about. So he's going to be focused and locked in on 19. If anybody is not going to beat him, that's who he's focused on. You see him there and lined him up in the backfield that time where he was having success on sort of the jet sweeps. They took that away and now watch for him here in the slot position. Second and 15 at the 37 yard line. Keelan Brown flushed out of the pocket, zips one over and here's Chris Hilton again. Hilton all the way to the 13 yard line. Sophomore making some plays now. Josh Slaughter upends him, but not before another Broncos first down. And again, this is where Keelan Brown is getting better this year. His, his initial read was Whitfield down the slide. You see his eyes down there, not okay, it's not open. Let me scramble a little bit, create something with my legs, and then that frees up a wide open Hilton there. Good job by Keelan Brown going through his reads, his progression, and not escaping the pocket too early. Inside the Farm Bureau Insurance Company's red zone are the Broncos as Keelan Brown barking out the singles. First and goal at the 13 yard line now for Zachary. Here comes uh, you high on the blitz, Brown on a design run, slips through the line of scrimmage and puts his head down to get inside the five yard line. Tackled by Leland Jones, but Zachary knocking on the door once again as they are trying to score for the first time in this second half. He'll bring up second down and two after the eight yard run by Brown. Well, and sometimes without, again, the, the, the big bag back there, you see Keelan Brown doing a lot of the damage. This is where it becomes a little bit more difficult on some of these second and short yardage. Brown lost one to the corner of the end zone. Hilton tried to jump over Micaiah Tung. You saw why he won the 5A high jump competition last May. Well, again, he good, got up there on this one. Good defense by Slaughter, but I thought this was more pass interference than the last one because it looked like he got up in him a little bit early and uh, up in that chest area. But again, he got away with that one. Uh, but obviously the design, you're right, Jeff, is to go throw one up there and let my, let my high jumper go up and get one out of the sky. Third down and two, this is four down territory. But the Broncos down by two touchdowns and under 10 minutes to go. And what has been a great high school football game in South Louisiana. I'd get Keelan Brown rolling out with an option to run or throw it. He looks to his right, same play, and a more hand, all oh, flags all over the place. Well, in this one, really, he didn't even give Ch Hilton a chance to jump, but it, that underthrown ball will oftentimes be the one that draws the flag. And I don't think he, and this is how they designed the play, but he threw this ball. It was so underthrown, it caused him to come back to the football, and then the, the pass interference was drawn. Yeah, Josh Slaughter did not like uh, the call there, but he got beaten on the play, I think, and he... 
Yeah, this one, look, it's, it's, it's severely underthrown there, and then he's trying to fight his way back. And Slaughter playing for that ball to be thrown at the pylon. It's not an automatic first down in high school football, so half the distance to the goal line. It's third down and inches here. And they fake the pitch, Brown straight ahead, touchdown! Touchdown Broncos! And it's back to within a one score game. Yeah, don't go anywhere. I mean, look, this is still a ball game. And that little play there, the little fake pitch to the running back, and then Keelan Brown exploiting the hole has been successful for him tonight. He's gotten in the end zone a couple times, and actually he's looking like he's hobbling a little bit there. They look the whole fake pitch, just enough to freeze the backers when you do that pitch, because you got to respect it. You got to respect that the fact that that running back may get the football, and it creates that little crease for Keelan Brown to squirt through. Keelan Brown's second rushing touchdown of the football game. Extra points have been a little bit of a adventure, and he missed one. That's huge. Actually, it was blocked. Blocked, and it might have been Josh Slaughter who blocked it. And he's just not getting any height on the ball. He's kicking it right into the line there. He's kicking it low. And we've seen some low kicks from him already, but you got to get that football up in the air, and that's, you know, you're just kicking it into the line. Well, it's also you got to get some Donald Berniard some <laughs> credit there. He busted through that line of scrimmage. They blocked the extra point. So now it's an eight-point game with 9.47. We'll take a look at the touchdown run again by Keelan Brown. Yeah, it's just a little, the little fake pitch just enough to kind of freeze the backers there. Creates a little hole. And Sixth rushing touchdown of the season for Keelan Brown. Well, I think we could hear Coach Brewerton fire it up. And kind of echoing our microphones there and saying, hey, look, you got to give me the protection I need. We got to make extra points. That's just that's just something that, you know, is expected here, that you're going to finish not just the touchdown, but you're going to complete the extra point conversion. And you can see he is upset. Can't give away even a single point against the U-High Cubs and expect to knock off one of the top teams in the country. And over end kick. Taken at the 12-yard line with Jordan Clark showing some good athletic ability here and nice job by the coverage team to keep chasing after him. Was there a flag at the end of that play? Yes, there was, and they may have gotten Quayar. He's over there pleading his case to the referee. You see him right there, number five, and uh, he's trying to say he got in front of him and didn't block him in the black in the back. But let's see. Come on, White. Just a five-yard variety, though. Well, you, you, I was, they were, they were thinking it was against them. <laughs> Our monogram express scoring drive as Keelan Brown finding the end zone. Very nice drive there. Nine plays, 71 yards. A couple of big pass plays between Keelan Brown and Chris Hilton set up that scoring touchdown run by Keelan Brown. So what are they watching on TV there? Are they, are they, is the drone flying and they can watch some of the replays yeah, of this stuff? I think I mean, so. I think they're they, looking at the different formations. You know, this the, is only U High's eighth offensive play of the second half. Hollins ran for 82 yards. And now they get it to Christian Harris who finds a spot in that Zachary secondary and he's up to the 47 yard line. Yeah, Christian Harris, again, he's built like a tight end, but plays wide receiver. Going to Texas A&M reminds you a lot of the Mike Evans, who was at Texas A&M and is now playing professionally, but this guy's got a similar build and great hands and can run. 20-yard pass play to the 46-yard line, just like that, you high. Back into Zachary territory. Kernan's pass is caught. That's Micaiah Tung who runs upfield. Gets sandwiched at the 35. Another Cubs first down, and they're back on the move here. Uh, Tung gets up limping a little bit. He's had a very good night. He's been active all over the field. A lot of two-way players here for you. That's the one difference, you know, between these classifications and with Zachary being 5A, you know, they don't really play a lot of two-way players, but obviously you high in the smaller classification, you don't have as many players on the football team. 
they're not dressing out 100 or so. It's probably only 50. And so uh, you got players going both ways. Makaya Tung struggling to get off the football field. So first and 10 at the 34 yard line. Harris in motion. Instead, they give the ball to Hollins, who gets brought down after a couple. Well, David Brewerton was telling us before the game, Jason, if he can get this contest in the fourth quarter and it's still close, you take your chances because U High has not played in many close games, even going back to last season. They haven't, they haven't had a situation where they got to close the game out with 8.26 left, get the ball into the end zone and try to make it a two possession game. Well, and the other thing is he said he wanted to see his turnover chain and he really needs, no. it, to, he needs it to show up tonight and this would be a, a good drive for that to happen. The turnover chain is collecting dust on the near sidelines. Four seconds on the play clock here. And they just get it off. They bring the blitz. McKernan off his back foot. And it is incomplete. Wow. That could have, again, that could have been the opportunity. That's what you got to do with old McKernan back there. You cannot give him time. Had he had time, he's going to complete that all day to Christian Harris because he had a step. But good job by Wes Brady applying the pressure. McKernan not being able to get what he needed on the football. But you can see Christian Harris had separation, but disrupted the timing and the rhythm of the throw. Third down and nine. Just under eight minutes to go. Big play here for the Broncos who are down by eight. See if they bring pressure again. No Makaya tongue out there as they trying, still look at trying his Trying to disguise injury. it. See if they're going to come off the edge. McKernan gets rid of it quickly. Oh. Right. oh, flag goes down. Jordan Clark was interfered with by Tyler Judson. Judson can't believe the call. David Brewerton is standing right there, and I don't think he likes to call either. Well, let's see. If it was, it was earlier. It was in the top of the route, just as Jordan Clark was cutting back. And honestly, I didn't think that he needed to do this, forcing McKernan to get the ball. They brought pressure again. McKernan had to make an early throw. But let's, I, if, if it came, it came at the top of the route, not when he deflected the ball. Let's see here. See, you're not gonna you're not gonna pick it up there. If anything, Jeff, I think it came. Here we go. We may be able to see if there's some hands. Well, hard to tell. That just looks like good defense there. I, because Jordan Clark goes down, the question is, did he slip or was he pushed down? Obviously the flag is thrown and that's that. First and 10 now at the 18 for the Cubs. McKernan will throw to Harris. Harris to the 15 and dives inside. Actually, he stopped short at the 10. Second and two. And Coach Brewerton, he's working this referee over pretty good. He's 10 yards out there on the field, and he knows how big of a play that pass interference call was. That would have brought up a fourth down. I heard him on our mics, as we've heard him a couple times tonight, <laughs> saying this is, a great, this is a great football oh, game. Yeah, you, yeah. Can't, uh, you can't throw flags on a play like that. Let him play. Mike Hollins, he knows how to play. Bouncing off tacklers into the end zone. Touchdown, Cubs. How about that? Wow. This guy is... A horse, how do you bring him down? He's tough. I mean, that's why I say I describe him as an SEC style running back, hasn't committed yet, but you know, he is that type of back that he just uh, is bruising. He runs well in traffic and he's just got the power and just the, uh, the sure will to get the ball into the end zone. Garrett Fleming will try to make it a 15 point lead, the largest of the night for you high if he's able to execute this extra point. Low snap and they nearly blocked it, but it's through the uprights. So 7.09 left to go. Mike Hollins has been very good tonight. He's been great. He's been awesome. Any adjective you want to use, he's it. We'll be back after this here on Game Time. 
Game Time on Your View is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Jeanette, you know how during our date, we couldn't remember the name of that show we both liked. We're Cox customers. We can find it on Contour. Last nine viewed. My grandkids are here. <laughs> Home improvement shows. More like this. We liked House Hunters. That's the name of it. Grandpa, you have a girlfriend? We're not using labels. That's a yes. Watch more, search <laughs> less, because you're a Cox customer. Cox.com slash learn. Game time on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Been a very good night for Mike Hollins. He's just saying another day at the office, Jeff. That's no all it is. 19 carries for 178 yards and four touchdowns. And That's he has given the Cubs a 15-point lead with 7.09 left to go. And I just like his like his style, man. He just he goes about his game. You know, he's he's he's, he's physical, he's passionate, but you know, he doesn't have all the flash and everything else that some of the other players just quietly goes about it. Another sky kick, and wow, great job that time to get on that football because that one looked like it was gonna land in no man's land. Is that Buddy Davis? I think that was Buddy Davis it who was. came running up there to grab that ball, but that was, they found a little hole over there, and that was a well executed there by Garrett Fleming as well. He put that ball right where he wanted it. That was just a good play by Buddy Davis. All right, well, it's hurry up time now for, uh, for Zachary. I mean, they're down by a couple of scores, seven minutes left. Look, they've got the, 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 the big play capability, but they need a big strike here and they need something quick. From the 40-yard line, Brown throws, almost intercepted. Almost had our first turnover of the night, and that would have probably done it tonight. In and out of the hands of the U-High Cub defender. Well, Hilton went down on the play, but Gusman nearly had the interception. Let's yeah. see if he. Let's see if we can see why he went down. But this one just got away from Keelan Brown, and yeah, you know, the only reason. Oh wow! Oh, big, big collision. Actually. Probably yeah. could have been called there for targeting. Uh, and that was a looked like a blow to the head there. And well, so, David Brewerton's out in the middle of the field and wondering why that wasn't called. And that's going to cause him to come out. I don't you know. It's going to have to go through some kind of protocol here. But uh, you can see Drew Nettles. But this is a this is a hit to the head. I mean, that's a well, that's a big shot to the head. And I tell you what, just about on. On any level, uh, you know, they're, you're going to get called in college. You're probably ejected. So, uh, you high got away with one there. Well, they've already lost Chris Simmons, and now Chris Hilton is down on the sidelines. Well, and, and see, uh, they're, they're sending him through the protocol. Clearly, they know it's a, a hit to the head. And, so second and ten, and Brown somehow got away from one defender, and he stays on his feet. And then Brown slips down at the 44-yard line, but wow, what an effort there by Keelan Brown. Andy Martin, the defensive coordinator, saying you got to wrap up, bring him down. Yeah, sometimes you just got players who are like Houdini, and Keelan Brown shows you why he's so special here. I mean, how do you escape Big 78 and then That's uh, Jaquil and Roy oh, who are unable yeah. to bring him down. <laughs> So Thanks. now it's third and about six. But really, that could have been a 10, 15 yard loss there and makes something out of nothing there. Clock is ticking. The clock is not their friend right now. We're getting down here under the six minute mark. From the 44. And incomplete. Jordan Clark got a hand on it for you high, but that was about it. And now fourth down. And I don't think the Broncos can afford to punt this football No, back. you got to go for it here. And, you know, just getting a little erratic here in the second half. That ball is just. Well, I think uh, they're going to punt it. Sean Burrell's walking out there. Now they say, wait a minute. We got to keep the offense out yeah, there. Yeah, I mean, 
uh, you punt it back to you high. I mean, that's you're just not going to have enough time. Well, because of the confusion, Zachary's got to burn a timeout when the clock was already stopped. So David Brewerton wants to talk about it. Well, that's the right thing. I mean, uh, that way you get your team over, dial up your best play. I mean, get your best playmakers involved and dial up your best play and see if you can convert here on fourth down and, and, and keep your team in the game. Game time on your view. Louisiana thanks Louisiana Lift for their support of this telecast, specializing in customer service on equipment, rentals, parts, and training. Louisiana Lift has been serving its customers since 1980. You check them out online at lalift.com or call their Baton Rouge office, 753-5700, or the New Orleans area office, 504-463-3400. Louisiana Lift, they're always on call. Fourth down for Zachary, and they will go for it with the football at their own 44-yard line. They need to get to the 50 to keep this game alive and an opportunity for them to come back and possibly win. R.J. Allen, the running back here. Let's see how many U-High brings. They bring four. Brown. Running out of the pocket, can't get there. Great open field tackle, and the Cubs defense comes up with the stand. I believe Jordan Clark coming up and delivering the hit on Keelan Brown, and Brewerton's team turns it over on downs. Great play by Jordan Clark. Yeah, it was, and the elusive Keelan Brown, obviously going through his progressions, felt the traffic, does the right thing, and you know, a lot of times Keelan Brown makes that play, so. Give Jordan Clark credit for really making a good one-on-one -on -one tackle that could essentially or potentially put this game away for you high. Watching Jordan Clark, that was textbook, right? Was, you could tell his father playing in the NFL as long as he has. I mean, he broke it down very well and just nowhere to run there for Keelan Brown and the Broncos on the verge of losing their second game of the season. Chad Mahaffey, his team, looks like they may be able to stay undefeated as they enter into district play. Let's take a look at what Zachary has coming up. They'll face a, at least tonight, going into tonight's action, an undefeated Walker team next week. Started off the year, 28 to seven win over North Shore. Got a bunch of people injured in that game and ended up losing to the Catholic Bears the next week. They've rebounded very well since then. And tonight they have faced a, a just a, a team that uh, I don't know anybody in the state can beat them right yeah, now. I no. mean, uh, and they've played the best of them. Yep. I mean, they really have. And you know, the scores, Always, I mean, uh, this may be the, the 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 game that has been the closest for the for the for the longest period of time throughout the game. But at the end of the, at the end of the day, U-High typically prevails by a pretty decent decent margin. At the 47-yard line, second down and 10. Keelan Ross got the carry the last time there. As Mike Collins not in the ball game, nearly 200 yards rushing. Ross, good run there to the. Pick up a five, Maverick McClure finished him off. Third down as U-High looks to run some clock under five minutes to go. Yeah, that's exactly what they're gonna do. You're gonna see them probably play as slow as you, they've played all game and maybe even keep it on the ground, grind that clock up because even if they don't score more points, you chew another two minutes or so off of this clock, Zachary still needs a couple of touchdowns to beat you. McKernan will throw, going to the end zone. Jordan Clark catches it, touches it. And that's your ball game. Wow. You high will improve the 5-0 and oh after John Gordon McKernan goes deep to Jordan Clark for 42 yards. Well, that is the, uh, that's the exclamation point right there. And again, it's been a, been a good contest up until this point, and then 
Here's the dagger right here. You're kind of thinking you is going to try to keep the ball on the ground and McKernan as accurate as he is and some of the explosiveness of these wide receivers that time Jordan Clark getting loose and just a perfect strike there. Nailing the coffin. Third touchdown catch of the season for the senior and Garrett Fleming will kick the extra point. Well, David Brewerton, I don't want to say he he had you high where he wanted them. He'd rather have the lead in the fourth quarter, but he knew they had a chance, hoping that their depth as a 5A school might prevail, but there's just too many athletes. They got too many good players. I mean, that's where it simply comes down to too many different options offensively or defensively to make plays where Zachary limited with not really having a power back this season and having a couple of wide receivers go down with injuries as well. Well, and that's and that's the thing with you high. I mean, you know, if you take away one thing, then they beat you another way. So, you know, if you're going to take away my passing game, then I'll run Mike Hollins at you. If you're going to take away the deep threat, then I'll throw bubble screens and I'll stretch the field laterally. I'll stretch the field. I mean, they they can play any way that the defense aligns. They've got skill players and and, and, the, and the potential to exploit any weakness out there in a defense. 49-27. Desperation time now for the Broncos. Back to return for Zachary. It'll be Jaden Williams along with Chandler Whitfield. Whitfield has really been quiet in the second half. Hugh High has really done a nice job keeping him from making any more big plays. There's a look at Jaden Williams. And the kick, squib kick. And it's taken by an up man at the 30 yard line. Let's look back at our upon this barbecue play of the game. And it came back in the first half. How about this touchdown run from Mike Hollins? Thing of beauty, showing the elusiveness, showing the power, the strength, and the desire and determination to get into the end zone. Big time score there from a big time player. Another look at it. That was a 24-yard touchdown run by Hollins. Just shoving guys. Tyler Judson, the old Miss commitment, trying to keep him out of the end zone, but to no avail. Now he zips it over, and that's complete for a few yards there, up to the 38-yard line. That keeps the clock going, though, as they got about seven on that. Second down and about three. Under four minutes to go here for the Broncos. Brown looking, trying to get out of there, and down he goes. Sacked on the play. Gideon Cuellar, along with Leland Jones there. It's now third down, and the clock continues to tick. As Uhai really flexing its muscle in the second half. A little surprising for us, Jason. We've done a lot of Zachary games, and the second half has always been the sec has always been Zachary's half. But they have met their match here tonight. Yeah, I mean, but they're not used to running up to against these yeah. caliber. I mean, of, of team that U High has, and I mean, when we we just ran through the roster, and you're talking about a a Clemson commit, a Texas A&M commit, a couple LSU commits, and uh, I mean, they're just players that loaded all over this roster at, at key positions. One going to Navy and I mean just a bunch of talent. Fourth down again for Zachary after the incomplete pass off the hand of Hilton. Josh Slaughter there. A big reason why U High has only given up just the one touchdown in the second half. The defense has played fantastic in the final 24 minutes of this one. And Slaughter's had an exceptional night. I mean, he's had a, look, those are some big time receivers that Zachary has, just a junior. And this guy's gonna be really good. We'll be talking about him again next year and what the possibilities will be for him. 
press coverage here for the UI Cubs. They rush three. Brown gets out of there, zips one over, and there's Whitfield. That's a first down at about the midfield mark. Nice catch there by Whitfield with his hands. And Zachary moves the chains. Long night for Whitfield, but even on that play right there, see Keelan Brown especially, he's got such a quick release, and that ball just, just comes out of his hands with a lot of pop, a lot of zip. Nine-yard pass play. Keelan Brown still doesn't have a lot of offers. He's getting them, though. There's, there's teams, Baylor, Virginia, and Wake Forest are just some of the teams that have started offering him, and more will come. The 45. And his receiver fell down. I think that turf's a little slippery out there. It is a bit humid. As we've seen uh, some guys uh, slip and fall so far here tonight. Second and 10 now for Zachary. Get another look at it, see if he kind of loses his foot and yeah, coming out of the break and just disrupts the timing there. And had he been able to come out the break, probably another completion. Well, they run the football here from Landry, who's got a first down into U High territory. Good run for him. That's the best run from a running back for Zachary. Kyle Landry had over 100 yards rushing against Madison Prep. Picks up the first down there. And one of the things that David Brewerton told us this week for this team to really get it going in the second half, they'll need to establish more of a running game. And they go back to Kyle Landry. He gets only a couple yards that time, maybe three. Tackled by Mark Capolo. Very smart young man, a 32 on his ACT, Jason. And he's a kid that's uh, hoping to get into either the Navy or Air Force. SMU has offered him as a preferred walk-on, but that kid, uh, he makes some plays out there. He made a bunch of plays in the game against Southern Lab. Brown is going to go deep. He's got Hilton. Hilton tries to jump over the defender again, but Josh Slaughter is just stuck on him right now. Yeah, he is. And he's sitting there sh saying, showing you the I got it sign. And Hilton may have landed on his hand there. And that's the other thing here for Zachary. Try to get out of here too, healthy. And may have landed right there on his hand. It comes up holding his hand. See there, still in the game though. So on third down at seven, let's see if they get the ball to Whitfield, who's lined up to the left of Chris Hilton. And uh, Hilton saying, I can't go out there and play. Brown under all kinds of pressure, and he got the ball to Kyle Landry, and Landry probably wishes he never caught it. Brighton Constantine slams him to the turf. Yeah, and, yeah his, Constantine's eyes got big on that one, and he just, he just devoured that. That screenplay. And... Good job just getting it off, but here, I mean, there's just no Look at boom. It. That was like lunch for Constantine. Yeah, yeah. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Would that be a penalty in the NFL? <laughs> if it was a quarterback, for sure. <laughs> yeah, running Whoa. backs, uh, you know, they can take a little more abuse for now, but quarterbacks, if you look at them wrong, you know, this is definitely a penalty. Under a minute to go. Fourth down for Zachary. And Keelan Brown off to the races again. And there's Constantine with another big hit. Constantine making the huge hit. And two big tackles for the Clemson commit. Yeah, he's just looking, looking, look, look at his arms. He's, he's long, he's rangy, and he can run at that linebacker position. And, and that's what's going to make him special. David Brewerton not happy at all as his team will fall to three and two after this one. While the UI Cubs improve to five and oh. And Constantine, nice day of work for him as well. Two big plays there defensively. Just 35 seconds left. UI will kneel on it. This big crowd that was out in the parking lot earlier today listening to the Paris County line jamming out there on a really a nice day for football and 
They wanted to see the Zachary Broncos knock off what is arguably the best team in the state. Maybe it's not arguably anymore. Maybe you yeah. is the best team. Not sure how good like a team like West Monroe is or a car or someone like that. Uh, but the U uh, High Cubs victorious here tonight as they come up to East Baton Rouge Parish, North East, East Baton Rouge Parish and pull off a very nice victory defeating Zachary 49 to 27. U High was hoping to uh, win this football game and then move on to district play with a 5-0 record and they've been able to accomplish that here tonight. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll hear from the winning head football coach, Chad Mahaffey. So stay tuned for that. This is Game Time on Your View. Game Time on Your View is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. Welcome to Atlanta. You've got everything you could ever want. But if you look deeper, there's a whole other side you've never seen before. Welcome to my world. But if you can play the game by your own rules and win, that's Superfly. <sighs> Superfly. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in-home Wi-Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi-Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com learn. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. In three and a half weeks, the Met will be hosting its annual ball, and we are going to rob it. $16.5 million in each of your bank accounts. Came on. Why do you need to do this? Because it's what I'm good at. Ocean's 8. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. Game Time on Your View is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, this holiday season and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. Final score from Zachary High School, University Lab defeating the Broncos 49 to 27. An impressive night for the Cubs. A lot of standout players in this contest. Number seven was probably the brightest star on this night, and that is Mike Collins, who, how about this touchdown run here? Great blocking down the field with Christian Harris and Makaya Tung in front of him, but that was a big play. Both offenses were struggling in the third quarter, and then that 82-yard touchdown run got you high going again in the second half, and it gave them a two-possession lead at that moment. And then this is Hollins again here. This is his fourth touchdown run of the night. Just bouncing off <laughs> tacklers and flexing his muscles once he gets into the end zone. Almost unfair. You yeah. know, you got all those wide receivers and everything else, and then you got this big bruising, pounding back that comes at you as well. And what a big night for him with four touchdowns. Well, let's hear from Mike Holland. Smacker Miles is standing next to him. Mike, you had some early touchdowns called back because of some offensive line penalties. You come up big in the second half. What changes did y'all make at half to be so effective in the second half? Um, we just had to, um, you know, get comfortable. We never had a close game in a while, so we had to, you know, just really just settle in because our offense, our O-line is young. They make mistakes. I know I pick them up every play. I knew some of the calls were uh, could have gone both ways. So, you know, I kept them up. I knew if they gave me a hole, I'll take it all the way. So that's all I kept harping on is, you know, give me a hole, give me a gap, and I'll take it all the way. So um, Coach Mahaffey really, you know, told us to keep our composure. Close game, you know, like I said, we haven't had one in a while. So, I mean, we finished in the second half. That's all I can say. To come to the 5A state champions and beat them at their place, what does it say about your team? 
Um, we can play with anybody. I mean, we're highly ranked for a reason. We come in week in, week out with a target on our back, and we execute under pressure, as you can see. So, I mean, there's, that was a great team, great team win for us. So we're going to stick together and keep working for next week. Thanks, Mike. No problem. Thank you. Jeff? Thanks a lot, Smacker. Great job down on the field as the U-High Cubs improve to 49 or improve the 5-0 and after the 49-27 to victory. And now for U-High, uh, it gets a little easier for them jumping into district play. They'll be hosting Burley next week. Next week, we will be over at Memorial Stadium for Catholic High and the Santa Ma Gators. 7 o'clock. We'll be on the airwaves on Cox Cable Channel 4 or 1004. You can check us out at yearview.com as we'll be streaming the game there as well. So our first look at the Bears, who beat the Zachary Broncos earlier this season. And they'll be taking on Santa Ma in a big district matchup. That will do it here for our broadcast tonight. Want to thank everyone involved. For Smacker Miles, Jason DeQuere, I'm Jeff Palermo. The U-High Cubs are 5-0 after beating the defending 5A champion, Zachary Broncos, 49-27. Game Time High School football action on your view is brought to you by Visit Baton Rouge. Be sure to check out the many events taking place in the Baton Rouge area this fall for the entire family. From football to Halloween, the holiday season, and New Year's Eve, Rouge offers an authentic Louisiana experience for everyone. For live streaming, behind-the-scenes coverage, and more, check out yourview.com. With Cox My Account, you can stay on top of things without having to call. Check statements and pay your bill instantly, so nothing gets by you. Keep an eye on the strength of your Wi-Fi and fix issues right under your nose by resetting your modem or set-top box. Even check TV listings. Sign into my account at cox.com today ah. so you never miss a thing. Buy brand new movies instantly with the new Contour from Cox. Welcome to Atlanta. You've got everything you could ever want. But if you look deeper, there's a whole other side you've never seen before. Welcome to my world. But if you can play the game by your own rules and win, that's Superfly. Superfly. Purchase movies and TV shows right from your remote. Download them to go and watch anywhere, anytime on your mobile devices. Start building your digital video library now. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in home Wi Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots, so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com slash learn. All right, so I'll go ahead and call this workshop meeting into session at this time. And uh, board members, uh, we'll go through every item on the agenda like we normally do. And uh, if there's something that you'd like to ask questions about or comment on, please just stop me, and then we'll, we'll move through this, uh, this agenda in that manner. All right, first of all, of course, is opening. Second of all will be approval of the agenda. We're showing no recognitions, no visitors, we don't yet know about public comment. In section six, we're showing no administrative personnel appointments. In section seven, we have committee and staff reports, workshop only. So 7.1 is out of, county, out of county travel paid for the period of August 23rd through September the 6th, 2018, presented by Ms. Rita Scallon, Chief Financial Officer. We're trying to, okay, you got it. Yes, ma'am. Sorry. That's okay. All right, uh, so section eight will be consent agenda. 8.1 will be the approval of the consent agenda. 8.2 will be the approval of the 